Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lift your hands everywhere. Let's give him all the praise and glory because he's mighty. Hallelujah. Can we bless him for his faithfulness upon our lives and upon this ministry? Everywhere, all of the overflows, lift your hands to heaven. As a family of faith, I'd like us to come before him with thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for the mighty miracles. Thank you for breakthroughs, healings, deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in John chapter 3 how that Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Hallelujah. In just one or two minutes, I'd like you to mention everything you know he has done in your life. The Bible says... Um, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. He said to sing his praise in the morning. Go ahead. Don't just say I thank you. Lord, I thank you for life. Lift your voice and bless his name. Mighty God. Lord, we bow to you. You are mighty. All the praise, all the praise, all the praise. Libon brast kada balato se de balika pora sudiaba. You are strong and you are mighty in our midst. There is no man that can do these things except you be with him. Hallelujah. Isaiah 58. Oh, 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 serious encounter this morning please listen I it was a very dramatic experience it was very strange I was driving a car and in that car someone asked me to come down and shook my hands and then a bigger car came and he said step in and I saw written on the car koinonia and the Lord said I will begin to magnify this ministry before the eyes of the world that's what the Lord told me this morning he said I will magnify you by myself let, let me tell you when God begins to magnify a man you will sit down and search around searched all over couldn't find no High and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody great, nobody greater than you. Sing it, I searched all over, searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find. Nobody great, nobody great, nobody greater than you. 
Hallelujah. Listen. The thing that the Lord will begin to do in this ministry will scare some of you. Write it down. You don't hear me speak like this all the time. The Lord himself told me I will begin to magnify this ministry. Why he does it, we can only be grateful and give him thanks. But you will see miracles and breakthroughs and lives and destinies change. I'd like you to lift your voice and say, Lord, I tap into that prophecy. I must be a partaker. Everyone inside and outside, please pray. The Bible says they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. Lord, we tap into it. We believe your word. You are not a man. You are not a politician. You are not looking for an office. Hallelujah. Listen. My Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. He said, no, is he the son of man? This year he gave us a word and he said, it's a year of multiplied grace. Brothers and sisters, I want you to develop your faith level to a point where you become stupid enough to believe God. And say, Lord, if I perish, I perish. Now you be God, almighty God. You know be my Lord. You know be my Lord. Now you be God. As a prophecy, yeah. Almighty God, you know be my Lord. you be God. You know be my Lord. you be God. Lord, we believe the one that speaks and has the ability to make it come to pass. Listen to me. Prophecy. Listen, please. Prophecy is not prediction. You see, you know, people in the world, when a man of God says something, they say a man of God predicted. Prophecy is not prediction. It's, it's, it's witches and wizards that do that. Prophecy, listen. Prophecy is enforcing a spiritual reality so that it can find physical expression something that has been finished in the heavens and so God creates a system with which you stamp it on earth I told you there are two dimensions to the prophetic there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic and the goal of the revelatory dimension of the prophetic is to give you direction to build your faith and to provide supernatural solutions so the word of knowledge the gift of prophecy work hand in hand to reveal the revelatory dimension but the most superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of the prophetic listen the creative dimension of the prophetic does not inform you about what is to happen it makes it happen are we together now so it doesn't say God wants to do something so I'm giving you an advanced awareness no 
the creative dimension of prophecy makes things happen listen i want you to get this i will keep drumming it till it enters your spirit please come pastor alpha watch this if hold this handkerchief hide it from me the revelatory dimension of the prophetic can say pastor alpha you are holding a white handkerchief and he will look and say wow and i say wow you are holding a handkerchief that's revelation but creation is that you don't have a handkerchief the word puts it there that's creation listen so i'm not it's not informing you about what there was no possibility for that thing to happen so listen i need to encourage you because you see many of us the only condition to believe the word of god is if it is only a revelation of something you already suspect to happen for instance if i say your uncle will bless you you just put two and two and oh my uncle called me this morning so that's what god was trying to say so you believe it but if you don't have any uncle and then i tell you the bible says strangers will feed your flock now listen it becomes difficult to believe it are you seeing now so it's not the power of god it's the faith to receive that dimension of prophecy that's why we are fasting it has never been about the power of god but that your faith level rejects it it says as many as received him meaning you can reject it hallelujah so if i speak to you now and i say um by the grace of god somebody his name is benga will favor you you know somebody called benga even if it's not this one i was referring to at least that knowledge just gives you some succor but when i tell you my brother god says he's changing your story and it does not rest on any anchor you just say amen but the truth is you don't believe it that's what happened to these jam students you see it has nothing believe me there are there are mysteries in this kingdom are you god can veto your faith level and use an anointing bring you into it and produce a possibility that would not have happened by your own faith samuel listen saul came and came under samuel's anointing it had nothing to do with his personal faith the spirit of prophecy fell he prophesied naked from morning till night are we together now you see but the problem many times is we don't believe i'm telling you unbelief is a dangerous thing that's why we are fasting you may never know how far god wants to take you until you have the rugged faith to say lord let's go for it let's go for it i don't have anybody so as god is saying i will lift you you are not saying oh god that there's my uncle stop all that nonsense i'm telling you god can do anything he carried a raven brought it when we say god can heal you from that cancer in your mind you are saying oh that's why an expert doctor came from india i now see Hi. i have learned to believe god if i die today i did not die in unbelief i died believing god i have i have made up my mind that if it's this god almighty i will believe him when god speaks to me I, I become the most stupid person you can ever find around because if I hear him that's it we run if we perish we perish see all this mechanical nonsense that you see people do this over stretching of of intellectualism and science oh God show me how it will happen he said you shall not see rain you shall not see wind please I like you to pray and say Lord raise my faith level I'm tired of doubting you pray koinonia those outside no matter how far you are the first overflow second third pray lord we believe your word we are believers we are believers Say na 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 na
to change our lives Lord we thank you tonight because you will radically transform us in the name of Jesus God bless you please sit down hallelujah obsession is to find a people who can believe him. God's obsession is to find a people who can look above and beyond the encumbrances of their lives and say, Lord, I believe you. Not that I am believing you. I believe you. If I talk to Sam and I say, Sam, come and collect 5,000 naira from me. The first thing Sam would do is to, in his mind, he will size me. Is that true? And ask himself, does this guy have the ability to provide 5,000 naira? Are we together? His response now becomes the conclusion his response now becomes the conclusion of his finding if he looks at me and I look like someone who can provide 5,000 then he will believe me if I stretch him a little more and I say Sam come and collect 500,000 then he will look at me what evidence can I find in this man's life that can give me a point of confidence that he can provide. I, I am okay with 5,000, but can he provide 500,000? Are we together? Then if I say, Sam, come and collect 50 million from me. Are we together? The same thing. He will now look at me and say, Is this, can this guy be worth 50 million? Not to talk of giving it away. So, he, the limit, the peg to which his mind can tell him, look, this is how far this guy can go, is how much he's able to believe me. So, when God says, I will do A, he says, Abba, God, I believe that. Then God steps off the bar. Then he comes to a point where you say, ah, God, it's not like I don't want to believe you, but you too, if you were me, would you believe? What you are telling God is, I have searched everything about you. This is the limit of what I've seen that you can do. One of the blessings of fasting is that there is a serious warfare on unbelief. 
it challenges your capacity to believe God. Because it's usually our interaction with the sensory realm. This excessive interaction with the sensory realm that is responsible for our unbelief. A little boy who grows up with a herbalist will usually find it very easy to believe anything. He's seen a goat disappear. He's seen a fowl appear. He saw key appear. Are we together? He saw a material appear from nowhere. And they handed it over to someone. So his mind has become accustomed to that possibility. That's why testimonies are powerful. The reason why they build faith in you is because when you hear of what God has done, all of a sudden, there is a physical person who is telling you, God did this thing in my life. And then you can believe it. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone tonight. I won't be teaching for too long. We're going to be praying tonight. This is the first day. For those of you who do not know, media help us. Um, we have seven days of fasting. And this is not a religious activity. It was directed and orchestrated by God. Verse 6, Isaiah 58, verse 6. There are people who do all sorts of fasting. Please give us verse 5. It starts by contrasting the various people fast and pray. Most times we fast, we pray, but we are not able to generate any serious energy in the spirit. And at the end of it, we just feel religious. We starve ourselves of food. But then nothing really happens. And here's what the Lord says. Is it such a fast as I have chosen? He's, he's challenging something that he's seen the people doing and they are calling it fasting. Number one, he said, is it a day for a man to just afflict his soul? He's asking you a question. Do you think what I desire is your hunger starvation? Is that really where the power is? Am I interested in just seeing you starve yourself of food? And look miserable and lose weight? Is the power and the result just in starving yourself? He said, is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? It's a question he's asking. Is it just a time to look pious? Your mouth is dry. Your face is oily. You're not wearing any nice clothes. Is that the idea of biblical fasting? Because many people think that's where the power is. They think by doing all of those religiosities, it is equivalent to um, showing that you are being spiritual. And here the prophet by the spirit is telling us no. He said, will thou call this a fast? And an acceptable day unto the Lord. Then verse 6. He tells us the kind of fast. That commands result in the spirit. Is not this the kind of fast that I have chosen. Commanded. Directed. Selected. He says to lose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed go free. And that ye break every yoke. Is this not the kind of fast I've commanded? Is there not a cause? Is it not because of something I desire to be done? That I call a people to come and fast. That means I want to do this but something is restraining me. I have the power. Their fasting does not give me power. Their fasting only steps up their own. Their, their belief system to a point where they are able to align with me and agree with me to do, to do this and to birth this to lose the bands of wickedness hallelujah there is a kind of fast koinonia that produces dramatic results in the life of a man there is a kind of fast that only gives a man a sense of spirituality 
so that you stand among your contemporaries and say kai do you know we are fasting to mean do you know i'm spiritual and then it becomes like a a competitive advantage so the other person feels well i'm not fasting when the person is eating you are rattling in tongues and you shout it loud so the person feels so guilty we are pressing into god you are here eating that's a carnal fleshly nonsense kind of fast that will end up frustrating you because that person will be eating but he will eat his way to breakthroughs and you are there starving are we together now and that's why many people get angry with god because they now say god i can't understand this is two weeks i've been stretching this is three weeks i've been stretching but nothing is happening we need to understand that there is a the, the major purpose i'm telling you this the major purpose of fasting is to address the issue of unbelief because that's really the limitation it is never has never and will never be the absence or the limitation of the power of god jesus never at any point in scripture says my faith has made you whole he said your faith your capacity to believe me has made my power available your faith your faith your belief your ability to agree with me i love the centurion he said no 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 no. you don't need to come to my house for i am also just like you a man under authority i understand the implication of being under authority i can tell one go and he will go i can tell one come and he will come so just like you i know you are under the father's authority and if you speak the government of heaven is committed to backing you and jesus said i've not found this faith no not in israel i've not found somebody who has this construction of understanding about me hallelujah this fast was supposed to happen in february but for some reason the lord kept shifting it shifting it and supernaturally it just fell to this point and um the interesting thing is that on the last day on the of the first koinonia will be five years exactly exactly five years 11th of march hallelujah see what god has done in five years supernaturally by the spirit of god and so we are going to pray please listen everybody will participate in this fasting this will be one week of strange you you can call it miracle imagine miracle service on steroids for seven days that's what is going to be happening beginning from today is is a time of intense results strange manifestations of answered prayer you see let me tell you we don't serve god because we are looking for results but i guarantee you your service to god will be impeded by repeated cycles of lack of result there is there is nothing more convincing than a man having a testimony of himself and say i believe god this is the result i trusted god this is the result strange manifestations of his power strange manifestations of revival and awakening hallelujah and so i'd like you to know that we're in for a flight from today till friday today is a communion service we're going to take communion and i'm taking our time to explain this to us because i don't want us to be careless and rash just to do this spiritually we must do it intentionally now beginning from tomorrow we are going to be gathering here every night 8 to 10 just to pray 8 to 10 from tomorrow till friday 8 to 10 it will be a time of intense prayer intense prayer we are praying to break through let me give us a few guidelines that will help us in this fast um you will need to connect to our facebook page for those of you who are not there facebook twitter so that you can get the updates number one 
is that your fasting must be backed up by quality times of the word, word study, intense worship, and prayer. These three things, please. Don't waste your time. Just wake up in the morning and sleep from 10 and then wake up quarter to 4 and you almost cannot endure. And once it's time, you just rush orange, banana and this. No, no, you are deceiving yourself. We are not playing games. You can. It's better to just eat. Fasting is hunger strike until it is backed up with a quality time of worship. You know, we've lost the art of worship. We pray a lot, but we have thrown away worship. Once upon a time, it was the other way around. People can worship, but they may not have strength to pray. Now, people pray. I mean, people can pray almost as if they are drunk. But we throw away worship. Believing that prayer just by itself will cover for it. You know, I've taught us here. One truth in the kingdom does not cover for the absence of another truths in the kingdom are like blocks of a building every truth has its jurisdiction of function and when it is kept within that jurisdiction it profits the believer the moment a truth is taken and stretched beyond its jurisdiction it becomes erroneous and it destroys the recipient hallelujah so i cannot hold on to one reality of the spirit that i've gotten and just believe that is all there is to God. And argue every other possibility. No. Truths in the kingdom are like building blocks. One upon another. You don't throw another block just because you have one on your hand. They complement, not replace. They complement, not replace. That replacement mindset is what has gotten a lot of people in error. So they carry certain truths of the Bible kick it away and then they camp around a dimension and the possibilities of god in their lives are only limited to the dimension they have allowed him to find expression whereas there can be more hallelujah so an intense time of word study an intense time of prayer pray in tongues pray seriously hallelujah number two Every day of the fasting, these were things that the Lord spoke to me. I'm communicating to us. Every day of the fasting, when you are breaking your fast, you should first break with the communion before your food. Not yam, not egg. Just listen. Let's be stupid enough to obey God. Are we together? Not orange, not banana. Communion. Communion, anything can represent prophetically. Doesn't have to be that. Um, at least everybody here should be able to part of your spiritual arsenal should be a communion kit are we together you have trainers you have jacket for cold you have first aid box with panadol you don't have a communion set that the bible tells you is a mystery that connects you you should have it so write it now you should provide it's part of the spiritual arsenals it's not just some religious things no hallelujah I'll give us scriptures for this. It's very important. The Lord told me. So every day, you break before we come. The time we are placing to break our fast is 4 o'clock. We'll put 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock is a fair benchmark so that the workers can refresh themselves, rest and do a few things for that time. So 4 o'clock, you start um, in the morning to 4 o'clock. So that's what is going to happen. Hallelujah. You break with communion. Don't just carry um, um, wafers, throw in your mouth and just gob zobo. No, 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 no. There's an attitude. There is an understanding. Lord, this is your body according to John 6. Please, I'm teaching you this. I want us to receive maximum results so that we don't waste our time for nothing. Father, I believe. I'll give you the scripture. Yeah, okay. It's, it's projected there. Jesus said, if you do not eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no part in me. I connect you by this mystery. So that whatever is in me and is not in you, by this communion, you come into that reality. And whatever is not in me 
and it's in you must die and dry up by that mystery in theology we call it the doctrine of interpenetration i've taught us this is the same mystery that happens in marriage the mystery where two people become one and the child that comes from them is the evidence of their oneness so god tells you i look at your life and i see certain things please understand this and then the communion also is an opportunity to apply the mystery of the blood the blood is powerful every day listen please don't miss this for any reason one of the things we are going to be learning i'll be showing you deep mysteries of prayer dimensions in the spirit where you can touch certain things in the heavens even as we pray the prophetic dimension of prayer not just praying carelessly i say god this is your word what is all this mm, the prophetic dimension of prayer shiba kaporataya hallelujah number three media since you're projecting help us with it okay that's for our online community that all of the prayer focus will be posted on our facebook page according to habakkuk 2 2 he says write the vision whatever the lord has told you make it plain so that those who read it will be able to run with it don't confuse the people when they will run with it only when they understand number four now this is important please look up the last two days of the fasting will be a marathon fast look up and let me explain it to you a marathon fast it will start from 10 p.m once we finish our prayer here on wednesday we are not eating again dry fast complete dry no food no water no nothing till friday by 12 p.m 12 noon in the afternoon marathon fast let me explain to you don't just think that we are we are starving you you see there are mysteries we don't understand in the kingdom unfortunately many of we men of god when we don't understand the thing we don't humble ourselves to seek to find out we castigate it and reject it is it in your bible that certain people wanted paul to die and they bound themselves with an oath that we will not eat we will not drink water until paul dies what was the relationship between they are not eating not drinking water and the death of paul when esther was ready to go before the king she told mordecai say announce to the camp declare fast three days no food no water declare fast our scientific christianity is why we are not powerful i'm telling you we jump we we spit on mics we spit on people but there's nothing we release of substance because we lack the requirements whether you believe god or not he will never bend to your standard so we are praying hallelujah acts chapter 9 when you read that scripture very very powerful mysteries that happen he said and he was this was paul listen i'm sharing with you a mystery there was an encounter that saul had at, as paul the bible says he was on his way to damascus are we together now and then the bible says you know light hit him etc he went to the house of judah and the bible says he was there how many days three days he said without sight he neither ate nor drank nor drank and within that three days something happened to him although blind physically his his eyes were open spiritually and he started having a vision he saw a vision and then you read verse verse 11 and the lord said to him talking about um um uh what's now ananias the lord said unto him arise and go to a street called straight and inquire in the house of judah for one brother saul of tassos for behold he does what so he was not just starving himself he was praying three days prayer no food no water and an encounter came he encountered not just the opening of his eyes 
after three days of praying and fasting his eyes suddenly opened the bible says in isaiah 58 he said then shall your light break forth there is something that fasting does to your capacity your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit your capacity to receive the impulses of sight and sound in the spirit when a man of god cannot hear cannot see cannot know you are a dangerous man of god because anything can happen and you become a recipient of whatever just happens the next point please help us media verse 5 now this is important it's very instructive I want everybody to participate in this i was excited when the lord told me already there have been testimonies mighty testimonies the lord told me that we should write down two sets of prayer lists please listen two sets the first should be a list of your desires and expectations according to philippians chapter 4 verse 6 it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. He said, make your request known. Not assume it is known. Make it known. Tell God, this is my desire. The Bible says that the expectation of thy heart. Right? Says your expectation will not be cut off. And then the second should be a list of every challenge in your life. That you believe must come to an end. Second Kings, please. 19 verse 14 to 16. The second is a list. We are going to be doing a lot of prophetic things in the course of this fasting. A lot of prophetic things. It will be a remarkable seven days. And Hezekiah, listen. The Bible says Hezekiah was a king. Right? Just a little background. And now Hezekiah was being threatened. In fact, Let's, can we take it from verse 12? Is it possible, please? Just, just back up two verses and let's, let's start from there. Listen. They were mocking Hezekiah. And look at the mockery. Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed? As Gozan and Haran and Rezelf and the children of Eden. You know, they were mocking. They were saying, Hezekiah, you think your God will protect you. Have you not seen what we did to other nations? Next verse, please. Where is the king of Hamath? He was telling Hezekiah. There was a king just like you who was bragging that we will not hit him and we finished him. We are on our way coming. He says, and the king of Abhad and the, and the king of the city of, you know, all of those names and then 14. And Hezekiah received the letter in the hand of messengers. When your enemy is bold to threaten you and he sends a letter, I'm coming. The Bible says, Hezekiah received the letter. I like him. He read it. He, did run to, he ran to the house of the Lord. What did he do? The Bible says he spread it. He opened it and said, God, read it. Next verse, 15. And Hezekiah prayed with the letter open before God. He said, O oh Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubims, thou art, you see, once Ezekiah was wise. Let me tell you something about God. I'll be teaching you this as we pray. The dimension of God you want to see, you invoke it in praise. You, if you want God to appear as a mighty God, there is what you tell him. David knew this. Hezekiah knew this. They wanted him to rise up as a warrior and say, God, you dwell in the midst of cherubims. And then he says, Thou art God, even thou alone. In other words, somebody is trying to be you here. Lord, where are you? Stand up and answer to your name. He says, Of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made the heavens and the earth. Verse 16. Lord, he said, Bow down your ear. See how a man is praying not foolishly praying intelligently out of faith knowing he was talking to somebody who was mighty enough lord bow down your ear and hear 
Then he says, open Lord thy eyes and see and hear the words of that man, you know, which had sent him to reproach who? Smart man. He never said to reproach me. He said, God, you are in trouble. You better be aware. I am representing you and something is threatening your name. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, if you want God to arise, take flesh out of his way and say, God, defending me is promoting your interest. If you let me fall down, you are the one who... That's what Moses told him. He said, Abba God, you better repent of this, your anger. You want them to say you brought people out, killed firstborns, and did not have the power to continue. And the Bible said God repented. Because a man knows how to talk to God. Do you know how to talk to God? There are some of us, you talk to God and at the end, even you, you feel like God was not listening to you because there is an art. That's why the Bible says we know not how to pray. There is a way to talk to God. When you go to a CEO, you don't talk foolishly. Sir, I didn't get my, my salary. The man will say you are a bad staff. You have an attitude. You knock the office, you step in. And the Bible says we don't even know how to talk to God. So the spirit of God comes to help us so that we can tell God what will force him to respond to us. Hallelujah. And so the Lord told me there's nothing we do that is outside the word of God. We call them mysteries in the kingdom. You read them as stories but only the spirit of God can show you the mystery behind their operation. Hallelujah. And then on the final day on Friday, the second list that represents the challenges in our lives, we are going to set it on fire. According to Exodus chapter 14, please. Exodus 14, 14 and 15. And Moses said to the people, fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you. But verse 13, please. 13. Where, where were you before you moved? Was it 14 or 13? Okay, 13. Which he will show you today. He said, For the Egyptians, whom ye have seen today, you shall not see them again forever, not for three years. That's why we are born in it. And it goes and goes forever. Hmm. Hallelujah. The Lord showed me that it will be. Already I've made my own list. I've, I finished making my list yesterday night. Two lists. Please. Be childlike enough to do this. And watch the mighty God that we serve arise for you. Most times we don't heed to instructions. And that spirit of rebellion, oftentimes, is what is responsible for our not receiving results. Because when you come to the kingdom, you must be childlike. Not childish. Childlike. Have the heart and the receptivity of a child. And you will watch God arise and move in power. Hallelujah. Every day we are going to be having a prayer focus. We'll be posting it online and we're going to pray. Eight o'clock, beginning from today. It's already past eight, so we'll soon start praying. Hallelujah. We're going to pray and it's going to be strategic. Listen, from tomorrow once you just come, don't even wait for the service to start. Already, by 7 30 worship is already playing and soaking the atmosphere praise the lord once you just come start blasting in tongues and praying don't just come and be pinching and waiting for somebody to say hallelujah or praise the lord we are coming to pray just a little time of worship um maybe testimonies will take testimonies offering offering is important don't come empty-handed i just remembered offering Prayer times, times of fasting and prayers are times that go on with sacrifice. Already I've been thinking of what I'm going to do in this season. Something that, that will catapult me to the next level of my life and destiny. 
hallelujah we are going to do our best to make sure that we work on the transportation and all of this but please i want you to invite everybody you love no even if you have to stand on our heads no problem but god wants to bring serious breakthrough hallelujah just give me the next 10 minutes to give us direction and then we'll pray tonight our focus is encounter with power listen encounter with power how that fasting can drive a man to the place of an encounter with the power of the holy spirit why do need why do we need power because there are giants on every mountain please listen there are giants on every mountain it takes the power of the holy spirit to subdue principalities and powers it takes the power of the holy spirit to rise and break through the emotional psychological and physical gravity that we face in our world today if you're born in our world today you know that just being alive puts you at a disadvantage being a nigerian in many respects puts you in a position there's nobody for you there are many of us here you don't have any father any mother there is nobody you are just alone with god it takes power to reign psalm 66 verse 3 psalm 66 verse 3 when we come from tomorrow we'll have people come to lead sessions we're going to spread it around so that we have as many people gentlemen ladies all together heads of department you know let's just have people so that we can even use it as an opportunity to give people room to also build even if you come and hold you see this altar you are seeing here you can come after service and dance around but once koinonia is here this altar you see requires power to hold this mic you are seeing you will come and stand here and be shaking and not even know what to do it takes capacity in the spirit to hold this mic you are seeing after the service you can come and play around and roll around but there is a mystery here when this service is on if you stand behind this mic and hold the mic you are really powerful believe me amen say unto god how terrible art thou in thy works listen it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves brothers and sisters it takes power bishop oyedeko began to um, when you when you listen to his teachings and then in his book how that at a point living faith was not growing they did everything they knew to do living faith was not growing and then they gathered the brethren together and they were praying and the lord asked him he said come out walk with me and he walked and at a point he said turn and when he looked at the sky you know just above the church he saw a thick layer and the Lord told him, he said, this is the layer that misrepresents your ministry. Do you know there is a spirit that misrepresents men before men? Every man of God, every pastor, every church know this. There is a spirit assigned to ministries to misrepresent what their idea, their agenda. You see what the Lord is doing here? It's because of the power of God. You don't know how much the devil has tried to misrepresent before men what we represent and what god is doing you see most pastors think that all there is to church growth is just to be able to heal the sick and do one or two miracles there is a strange spirit that misrepresents people i was sharing i think with the leaders that in zaria here listen zaria here there is a spirit upon kaduna state and zaria the validity of impact in this city is three years check your history the moment you do anything after three years they celebrate you every time and something happens in your life crashes you and you're out musicians have have risen from this city 
pastors have risen from this city businessmen have risen from this city nothing happens by the time you are rising but you get to a height and something comes it's a spirit you see music artists that they invite to zaria sometimes they come for like four weeks stretch different churches are inviting them they celebrate them and they look like the spirit of the city all of a sudden their glory fades how many groups have risen from this city how many pastors have risen from this city consistent impact there is a spirit that silences impact brothers and sisters it takes power to remain relevant in a generation it takes power this applies to lives it applies you see it happen to lecturers you see it happen to people great people rise to certain levels and then mysterious things begin to happen it takes power to reign the only language that is understood in the realm of the spirit is the language of power it takes power for you to prevail in life he said for as a prince you have fought with god and you have prevailed it takes power to remain in health it takes power to ward off the arsenals i jokingly used to tell a few people only god can imagine the plots of darkness day and night over my life only when we get to heaven, I will know the amount of things that I've eaten that may be poison or are poisonous. Only God can tell the number of shrines where my name is invoked day and night. You cast out devils after miracle service. You are praying for the sick. I've spent years of my life laying my physical hands on people with communicable diseases. If I were faking it, you would know by now. Bible says and the first Adam was a living soul it says the second Adam is a life giving spirit are we together everybody say I need power in my life please say it I need power in my life you need power to do everything including remaining alive in this wicked generation you need power say I need power please say it again I need power There are arrows that fly by day. There are noisome pestilences that fly by night. You go and sit down in a restaurant and eat. You don't even know the conviction of the person who cooked that food. You don't know where he got which charm to do what. You eat and say, Madam, one more wrap. You are just eating. It takes power to remain alive. Is God speaking to us? Right now, people are even afraid to move from one point to the other because they are afraid. What if my car capsides, brothers and sisters? A powerless Christian is already dead. Not will die. He's already dead. It takes power. An encounter with power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, but you shall receive. Meaning you can reject it. It is within your power to reject it. But you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And that empowerment will make you a witness. You keep your heavens open. I knew long enough or long ago that I needed power in my life. As a young man doing ministry, many things are against you by default. You need power to remain relevant. My work schedule is very tight. Believe you me. There are many people, if you do what I'm doing, you will break down in three months. It takes power. This is not just food. It takes power. Power manifested in different dimensions it takes power otherwise one day you will be sick you will not even know there are times men of god have stood on stage preaching and they collapsed and died it takes power 
power that superimposes the natural limitations of this body it is real hallelujah there are some of our family members who are in situations where it will take the power of god not discussion they don't need counseling they need a collision with power there there is darkness the first four days of this prayer we are going to dedicate it to intense spiritual warfare establishing prophecies over our lives please hear me everybody inside and outside god is giving us an opportunity to break through to break through to break through you must maximize it i made up my mind that within these seven days some things must my life must step into another dimension i vowed a vow before god this morning i said lord i will participate with all my heart you can argue it you can come around in the night and just watch people you can come around looking at the lady you like waiting for the prayer to finish so you escort her home you can come around selling uh, whatever food you have to sell outside you can come carelessly or you can come predetermined the bible says the woman said to herself she came she she didn't just bump into him she said if i may but touch the hem of his garment hallelujah we are going to pray there is a relationship between prayer and the release of spiritual power listen please there is a relationship between the ministry of prayer and the release of spiritual power truly speaking a prayerless christian is a powerless christian the, there are three areas that satan attacks in your life the moment you see these three areas under attack know that your life is under intense attack number one your passion for god your passion for god satan will not make you to be drinking and smoking and sleeping around no sometimes it's, it's too much is the backsliding is too is too much it's like a plane just landing anyhow you will realize it fast and come back so he will take it gradually the passion for god i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord it's a sign that my spirit is still in tune when people are already backsliding and the, the the spirit of revival is eroding from their life they lose favor and fire for the things of god and for the house of god number two your prayer life oh i'll pray by 10 and then you wake up 10 30 and say kai i'm asleep ma you say let me just stretch a little 30 minutes stretch a little you wake up and see that it's three o'clock i say oh well i mean let's let me take advantage of the night time and it's already morning and you will first feel bad but after a few days you become comfortable and guess what satan will never strike you he's not a fool listen call satan a deceiver you are right call satan an accuser you are right call him a fool you are wrong satan has an advantage of age he is very old very old hallelujah very old and he can take advantage he has seen moses adam abraham he's lived through dispensations and he has studied mankind as an entity he has studied our vulnerability the spiritual wear and tear that befalls men listen to my message why revivals die the mystery of the humanity of men how the humanity of men can interrupt the program of god in the life of a man if he does not sustain a system in the spirit to keep him in check the bible says by the strength of an ox is more good by the strength of an ox hallelujah your prayer life there are many of us here I know it and I can discern by the spirit that our prayer lives are dying. dying. Carelessness is a dangerous thing in the spirit. It's worse than immorality. I'm telling you. Carelessness. Gradually, gradually. 
you lose spiritual standards and it is very subtle one week you have not prayed you have not done anything satan will never attack you he's not a fool it's like a spiritual meter he's just allowing it to go down there are pastors who don't pray they snort their way to the poopy snort their way back rema is still coming that's what happened to Samson. Samson slept with a prostitute. Immediately after that, he removed the city gate. Satan kept quiet and left him. Delilah, that girl, when she came, Samson, she now asked Samson, what's the source of your strength? He lied to her. She now tested it. You see how he was spiritually dead? Because a man who is spiritually alive would have picked the spirit behind that beauty. Now he was carnally minded. The Bible says to be spiritually minded is life eternal. And to be carnally minded is what? Death. Right? And then to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Many of us, our lack of prayer have made us foolish because we don't discern things spiritually again. When people annoy you, you used to check things from the realm of the spirit. But right now you have been depraved physically. You respond to things sensually. And that's the realm of Satan. You camp around the flesh realm, he will finish you. You can be jumping around and a new creation in Christ till you die as if Jesus didn't die for you. Because it takes understanding. Hallelujah. Prayer life. We must be spiritual people. All of a sudden, when your parents want to get serious with God, something just happens to their finances. Something just happens. And you think it's your father or mother that are fighting. No, no. It's a strategy from hell. He knows that for as long as there is abundance, there is now time to seek the face of the Lord. So he comes up with a system to take you away from the prayer place. He knows. Hallelujah. Prayer. Number three, the third thing that suffers, many of you think I'm going to say the word of God. No, the third thing, let me tell you, the word of God can still be moving around in your life while you are dying. It's one of the, it's one of the biggest arsenals of Satan's deception because the biggest area of confusion in a believer's life is his understanding of what the word of God is. Satan will not stop you from reading this. He will say continue. He can use this and destroy you because we don't even have an idea of what the word of god is we think proximity to the bible i'm reading ezekiel i'm reading proverbs that means that i'm getting it so he preoccupies you with it the third thing satan attacks when he wants to destroy you is relationships he kills your connection to people who have the power and the grace removes you from your spiritual family removes you from the company of men and women who can take advantage of their secret place and cover for you while you catch up spiritually he takes you away from people listen solitude is different from isolation when satan wants to destroy a man he cuts off that spiritual grafting and you are alone it's usually pride that keeps us in that position and when he strikes you one of the chief way he does it is he creates a reason for you to fight with everybody who can minister to you spiritually it's an it's a dangerous attack i'm showing you deep spiritual things so all of a sudden you are in prayer department you start having a problem with your HOD. You start having a problem with the assistant HOD. You start having a problem with the way they pray. It's like we're taking too much time. He uses offense. You see that? And you will usually find one or two pe persons to agree with you. And say, so you, man, you are observing it. Honestly, me too, I've been keeping quiet. But this thing, will we keep quiet like that? You think it's a solidarity forum. But you are dying because he's cutting you. I have talked with many people and I can show you 
how the devil got advantage of them the bible says we are not ignorant of his strategy the word stratomai his his methodology satan has a skill there is a way he does it he isolates you and keeps you in a position where that spiritual bond is no longer there and it is difficult for somebody to even discern your pain. Because you see, the beauty of brotherhood is that our discernments are connected. There are times that this brother is about to fall. And God will just show Benga a dream. And you say, Kai, uh, Femi, I don't know. Don't be offended though. I saw something. But when that isolation goes, he uses offense. Number two, he uses dishonor. Dishonor. Dishonor is a key. That Satan uses to cut you away from your source of blessing. Dishonor. Is God helping us? There are many of us. You may be here. But that connection is no longer there. There are no seeing eyes. There are no hearing ears. If the devil pushes you, he pushes you to the sea until you go and fall down. It takes power. So he attacks your relationship. Listen. Do all you can within your power to maintain relationships that bless you spiritually. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I'm teaching you something that will bless you. Unbelievers know this. They guard jealously their relationships with people, colleagues around, authorities over their lives that can bless them spiritually because they understand that there is a mystery of their continuity that on the strength Elisha knew this and he could cheaply carry the mantle of Elijah and say, if my own personal faith cannot pass this, where is the God of Elijah? Many of us do not understand this. Hallelujah. And certain things that can come cheap in our lives, we struggle over it aimlessly because there is no understanding. Please guard relationships, especially spiritual relationships. They have a lot to do in your life. There was a gentleman that I didn't see for a long time. And then one day I saw him and I looked at him. I said, ah, how are you doing now? And the guy looked at me and said, Apostle, are you free? I said, no, 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 I'm on my way going somewhere. But I mean, just talk to me. Give me a summary. He said, there's no way I can summarize what has happened in my life. There is no way I can summarize it. And he was almost crying. I said, what's wrong? And he said, Apostle, if I tell you anything has gone right in my life, I'm lying. There was a time in that guy's life years ago. He insulted me. And said certain things and I kept quiet. I had to pray for him. Because see the anointing is a double edged sword. I, I, I felt really sad for him. And I looked at him. I said me I don't curse people. It never comes out of my mouth. No I don't curse people. However there are side effects of certain things. I looked at him. I said ah, I thought you were doing well. He said nothing had worked in his life. Nothing. And I said no 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 no. This cannot happen. I want to bless you. I want to speak over your life. No job. No headway. You enter a relationship. The lady is happy. You start talking about marriage. She will stop picking your call. And all of that. Met one prophet who told him to bring 150,000. Borrowed 150,000. Brought it. Nothing happened. That's the price you pay for ignoring, not having discernment. To ignore spiritual relationships cheap ladders that you can climb please pay attention to what i'm telling you so the devil destroys your life offense dishonor destroys your life with it tonight as we pray i like your heart to be set for an encounter counter with power there are people inside there are so many people i see them right to the back outside wherever you are never mind where you are i remember in 2004 i was scattered in a crowd like this 
standing close to a pregnant woman in Reinhard Bonke's crusade, desperately coveting the anointing for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This pregnant woman will lean on me and at a point I'll say, Madam, please, please, I've been standing here too. Yeah, not, I mean, I'm not, I'm, But I insisted and I had a vision. That was my first vision of the Holy Spirit, not Jesus. I saw a bird. You've heard it, me share it. A bird that would be as big as this room with silvery wings. It was just hovering round. Hovering round. Reinhard Bonke was about to take water so that he would start ministering. To be honest with you, the revelation he shared is not if I share that thing here, you will sleep. You would just say, Kai, please, Abba, Apostle, what's wrong with you? How, where did you lose all this revelation? Let's play another message, sir, if there's nothing to say. Offense. You will now come there and say, Kai, this man, my eyes was glued to him because I knew what I came for. See, do you know why some people never receive? They don't know why they come into God's presence. So they come and say, ah, this guy, why did he combine yellow and green? How is that your business? Come and be focused. As haphazard as the person is, he's receiving. You are there. Bitterness, offense, distraction. I remember Reinhard Bonke was drinking water to start ministering to people. I saw that bird moving around. And the spirit of the Lord took me to Genesis chapter 1. Right? From verse 1 and 2. And the spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters and then he began to pray my goodness there were baptisms there were miracles and the lord taught me that this is how miracles happen you never speak until you can discern the movement of the spirit the union between not the presence the movement of the spirit and your words give birth to a child called the miraculous see That revelation alone has brought bread to my life. That revelation. Because you will be able to bless people. Release the power of God again and again. There are people here with all kinds of things. Please, make sure as we pray, you will pray every chain and every nonsense. Every manifestation of every yoke upon your life. We are just starting off tonight. Isaiah 10.27 Then we'll pray. And it shall come to pass in that day. Which day? The day your faith tells you is the day. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from thy shoulder. And his yoke from off your neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. A lady sent me a text this morning. In one of the sessions, I'm going to be sharing with you the mystery of oppression. Before we pray, I will show you certain things. You can look at your life and your family. And know that this one is not just the issue of submitting prayer requests. This is an issue of stretching through. Like they say, take this drug. Two in the morning, two in the afternoon, two in the night. They say, repeat. For how many days? Five days. After three days, it will look like nothing is happening. But on the fourth day, that fire will be too much for any devil. And you will start seeing things manifest in your life. Have you seen things happen like that? You keep taking the drugs. After three days, you are even doubting. I hope this drug is not fake. You don't know what is happening internally. By the fourth day, you will wake up with health. And you'll be surprised. That's how it is spiritually. Brothers and sisters, there is the yoke of bondage. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The yoke of bondage is real. It is upon lives, destinies, families. I have seen it. I saw it in my own family. I saw it in my own life. The yoke of bondage. There are yokes upon people that misrepresents them 
no matter how good your intention is you are trying to be nice to the guy he says you have come to destroy my life he say is it's, it's an operation of darkness you can pray it away what you sit down and tolerate <laughs> one day go better it will never change never ever change time does not change anything it takes prophecy it takes anger in the spirit to say lord i'm contending with you i'd like you to see this place as as a tabernacle of god's glory for the next seven days we are going to pray that it will please the lord for his presence to rest upon this ground that within these seven days all kinds of things will be possible we'll be taking testimonies every day please make sure as god gives you remarkable testimonies you submit it i think some three ladies they are here they sent me a text that there was a lady who was having an issue of oppression and they wanted her to see me i said I, I don't have that time please pray for her they prayed for her and i was told that her brother was it her brother or so died yesterday of the same issue if satan cannot strike you he will look for somebody around your life that he will strike in such a way that it will hit you brothers and sisters he spake a parable luke 18 verse 1 to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint men ought always to pray and not to faint we are going to be praying for an encounter with the spirit of power for the next maybe 20 25 minutes of we are going to pray in tongues you are not asking for anything you are not discussing anything you are not feeling the holy spirit in this atmosphere you prepare your heart to receive and continue please we are going to pray after that i'll begin to direct us on specific prayer requests and we're going to pray prophetic prayers i like you to say it must work for me please shout it inside and outside it must work for me yes it doesn't work for everybody the bible says blessed is she that believes he said for unto her there shall be a performance of those things that are spoken blessed is she that believes we're really going to pray please i'd like you to take on that priestly robe and wrap yourself with it and say lord grace to strike a chord in the spirit hallelujah grace to strike a chord in the spirit grace to stretch myself and pray in the spirit it's a time of fasting it's a time of prayer many of you from this prayer you are going to begin to have visions and, and encounters visions that you used to have before you will see them being restored rise up on your feet everybody before we pray just lift your hands hallelujah everyone inside and outside lift your hands for me hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 custodian of the power of God Holy Spirit Holy Spirit You are welcome I welcome you to my life I welcome you to confront the darkness in my life. 
come you to end the confusion in my life Mosso nana nana na 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 he says you have not because you ask not listen you have not because you ask not i'm intending to give you an encounter with power not just power to touch people to fall down real spiritual power demonstrable grace hallelujah hallelujah listen i hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land express your desire i hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land for all Hallelujah. Listen. Before Koinonia started, when I went on my retreat, the Lord gave me an instruction. I spent 72 hours. My eyes did not see the sun. The sun. The sun. And after the three days, I knew the power for the next level of ministry had come. And that no devil, brothers and sisters, it takes powers to command signs and wonders. It takes power. The power that can draw men to come and see what is happening. It takes power to see the unseen. Hallelujah. I pray for supply of grace. Even as we begin to pray, I pray for supply of grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Worshippers, you are going to pray. We are going to pray in the spirit, maybe for a few minutes. After that, the media will take over because all of you must join. And so the media will take over and just project worship so that those inside and outside you will get a comfortable position and I'd like you to pray. We're not giving any prayer point for now. Until I tap the mic, then you come back and then I'll begin to lead us prophetically as we pray. Lord, let there be supply of grace. Supply of grace. If there is anyone here who is tired of where you are spiritually and you know that it will take power for you to move to the next level, please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit. Don't do man of God tonight. There's no prophet, no pastor, no nothing. Se 
Rege baka talaba la baka prada daba. Sege te bala tapro, sege te prada bala daba. Mande ke toko to preke de bela de bosh. Leke te ke te, leke te ke te. Raka tapa ko proto sotosh. Era mana na na ba se na 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 ya na 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 ba. Te na ba se na 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 de. De 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 arabash. De abasa na na Maria. De abasa na na Maria na 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 na. Shubara bara 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 bara. Shaka tapra kada bara bara kada tapra kada bara bara bosh. Zolko tapra koto bara 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 kada tapra. Shaka tapra kada shaka bara bara kada tapra. Leka tapo koto bara kada bara bara bosh. Empra kada 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 bara 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 kada bosh. Raka tapra kada bara bara bosh. Empra kada koto bara koto bara bara bosh. Shaka tapra kada bara bara bosh. Empra kada 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 bara 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 bosh. Raka tapra koto bosh ke bosh ke bosh ke bosh. Eke te te koto bolo do bolo. Koto pregene, meka pani akata bash, ata prata skata mara na mara na ba. Eke roto soto pregene, shakate shakate. Eka raba ba 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 koto pregene mene bosh, shakene mara na ba. Shoko to pregene, lente koto pregene kete 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 bosh. Manda praka ta mara na ba, raba ba 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 kada mara na mara na bash. Shoko to koto pregene mene bosh. In praising God is not singing. The high point in praising God is not chanting or recitation, not even crying. The high point is when we acknowledge Him. Remember? Yes. That if you're dancing, you're singing, and whatever else you do does not translate to acknowledging His good works, you are not praising Him. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, the Bible says, and lean not to thine own understanding, it says. Next verse, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 says, be not wise in your own understanding. It says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. So we call upon the Lord in prayer and in praise. And I did observe yesterday that most believers know how to pray, but few people know how to praise with understanding. Nigerians know how to dance, we know how to shout, and that is wonderful. But it's amazing that in all of this, sometimes it ends up as religiosity and even becomes sin because you find out that it just delves to the marketing of flesh with no spiritual substance in it while it is wonderful to use every scriptural mechanism to praise god the real praise comes from the heart lord i acknowledge you for all that you have done you are the reason why i'm alive are we together the psalmist will write he says bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord oh my soul then he says and forget not his benefits he does not stop there he starts listing the benefits who forgives your iniquities your sins are we together who healed thee from your diseases this delivers you from your destruction and so on and so forth that's what it means to acknowledge him this in this session very quickly i want to give us a charge as we pray and trust god to release mighty testimonies upon our lives i want to talk very briefly on the power of god the power of god the power of god first chronicles chapter 29 please and verse 11 when we see it when we have it projected i'll request that we read together first chronicles 29 and verse 11 our discussion is on the power of god we want to explore a bit to understand what exactly is the power of god when the bible talks about the almightiness and the power of god um, we need to stretch ourselves a bit to see the various dimensions and and what essentially what the power of god is about so let's read this projected ready one to read thine O lord is the greatness uh -huh, and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is thine thine is the kingdom O lord and thou art exalted as head above very powerful
powerful scripture not above some but above all please be seated god bless you and thank you every time you watch a man of god or you watch any kind of supernatural occurrence happen usually we credit unusual manifestations to the presence of power it seems as though our world has a very inherent ability to recognize power whether it is demonic whether it is from god the most important thing is we know subconsciously that power is responsible for unusual outcomes am i right on that say for instance you do not necessarily say i am powerful for walking on this stage because it's very human and very natural to walk the bones were built to be able to carry my weight but once i begin to float and fly now that becomes another dimension the next the next discussion becomes to verify the source of the power not the absence of power am i right on that so we know that every time power is present the the striking feature of the presence of power is an unusual manifestation that many times defies the natural course of nature am i right on that yes for instance it is usual for someone to build wealth gradually by the spirit of god through the dignity of kingdom integrity and from an economic standpoint you can predict that under normal circumstances maybe in five to ten years a little above that you know you can be sure that something like that will happen but if in one year or even one month that individual accumulates the results of 10 years now we have to vet carefully as to the source of power but we cannot deny that was there was an outsourced ability that produced that outcome am i right on that yes if i told you that i were going back to abuja and then you didn't find me in the airport you didn't find me in any vehicle and suddenly i call you and say i'm there <laughs> hallelujah yes i know science is still exploring telepathy and all of that but um you would have to say okay this is it's either this is philip's strategy are we together or some kind of demonic thing but i'm just trying to say that everybody who has been on earth for a while is familiar with the whole idea of power we may not um, understand the concept in terms of its definition but we cannot hide the effect of it we know that everywhere power is available there must be unusual manifestations unusual occurrences that means we have come to agree subconsciously that power is related to unusual manifestations everywhere there is power there will always be unusual manifestations power seems to sustain the ability to break the normal occurrence of things to interrupt status quo hallelujah do you believe that i'm saying that because that is what will begin to happen to you from today in the name of jesus christ that there will be unusual accelerations supernatural possibilities in your life and i am telling you up front so that when men ask you by what means did you achieve this you will simply tell them the great power of god this is what the power of god is able to do hallelujah praise the name of the lord so we know that every unusual manifestation on earth is credited to power when jesus walked upon the earth he did not start his ministry even though he was the word incarnate even though from age 12 the bible records that he was in the temple learning under the doctors of the law you would think with the abundance of the revelation that he had already from learning the law he was fit enough to start ministry jesus himself had to delay his manifestation until he went to john the bible says at age 30 he was found at the jordan with john while he was baptizing and john looks at jesus and says behold the lamb that taketh away the sins of the world hallelujah and john declined initially to baptize jesus he said i am not worthy to un 
untie even the latchet of your shoe and jesus tells him suffer it to be so that all scripture be fulfilled and john dips jesus in water and your bible says when he came out of the waters the heavens open am i right on that and it says the holy ghost came upon him in the similitude of a dove and there was a statement from heaven he says this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased then the bible says the holy spirit drove jesus into the wilderness and there he prayed and he fasted being tempted of the devil he overcame satan by what was written and then the bible records your bible records that he returned in the power of the spirit that was the commencement of his ministry not just with illumination and knowledge as powerful as knowledge is knowledge without a divine engracing will only turn you into a historian with no ability to defend your propositions this is what we lack largely in the body of christ i do not believe they are, we are in ignorance the challenge is that we say so many things that we have not obtained the grace or the empowerment to prove for instance we say that god is a lifter for instance we say god restores and we shout amen truthfully so except that that statement remains barren until the power to make it happen have comes are we together yes and the world that we live in today is the world that is obsessed with evidence that when you say god does this he can do this he can do that they honestly will not pay attention to you in fact here's what jesus said jesus himself saw a fig tree right a fig tree that was green looking very attractive and he himself was deceived by that fig tree he got there and not finding any fruit he caused the fig tree that means you should not attract people that much without nothing to give i'm saying that because in the name of jesus nobody will ask you from today where is your god yeah. nobody will ask you for how long will you keep saying without us seeing in the name of jesus christ yeah. the kingdom was built to advance on the strength of the speakings of god and the performance of his power do not forget the speakings of god and the performance of his power one more time the speakings of god and the performance of his power that means everything god says he wants to do he does not just say he wants to do are we together so your life must subscribe to that template where for everything you say there is the grace component to be able to defend it so when you tell someone for instance that my god is able to open a door for you they say i believe it there needs to be a corresponding performance hallelujah praise the name of the lord so there is a desperate need for power now in in the church especially the pentecostal charismatic circles we're not unfamiliar with the manifestations of power at least we've seen many things that relate to power healing falling under the anointing and so on and so forth but for the average believer i think subliminally we have come to believe that power is the exclusive preserve of men of god pastors apostles prophets so once you are not called into the fivefold ministry generally your heart does not yearn for power maybe you would yearn for wisdom maybe you would yearn for favor but once we mention power we generally say i don't need it i'm not doing anything on the pulpit but notice your jesus the very church that we are part of now was founded upon the ministry of power jesus told the disciples he says tarry ye in jerusalem after three years of intense mentorship he said you are still not qualified to go and start you would not be the true church until you are endued with power so he says tarry ye in jerusalem until ye be endued with power and on the day of pentecost acts chapter 2 and verse 1 the bible says now when the day of pentecost was fully come the bible says they were with one accord in one place verse 2 says suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it came and filled the house and filled all they that were sitting and then the bible says there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon how many 
each of them 120 it sat upon every one of them it sat upon every one of them and they were all filled i like the word all filled not some filled they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance now when you back down to acts chapter 1 from verse 7 and 8 they met jesus and said will you at this point restore the nation of israel and he said it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the father has put within his care he says but ye shall receive power verse 8 after that the holy ghost is come upon you he never said you will receive an information he never said you will receive encouragement he never said you will receive the basis for controversy he said you shall receive power you shall receive power notice he never said i will give you power he said you shall receive meaning it is within your power to reject it if i say you shall receive something you can choose as an act of your volition to reject it and sadly many have rejected the power of the holy spirit because we only give it a pentecostal outlook for want of word we just feel that I'm, I'm not interested in getting people to fall down. I'm not interested in prophesying. I'm just a great businessman that God has called. I'm a kingdom financier. Leave the power to the apostles and prophets and pastors. But that is not scriptural. It takes power. Please listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. It takes power to birth the purposes of God in your life and my life. It takes more than good intention. There are many reasons the Bible tells us to, to contend for power. One of it is that the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world, it says, ye are of God. And the whole world, the whole world includes your village, includes Nigeria, includes America, includes anywhere at all. It lies in wickedness. So Psalm 66 and verse 3 says, Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you through the greatness of your power through the greatness of your power number two the purposes of god can never be achieved in the strength of the flesh it is important that we come to terms with this you cannot produce god's dimension of results in the strength of the flesh it says for by the arm of flesh is that true the arm of flesh is limited nobody is able to do much with the arm of the flesh hence the need for power so the angel comes to a young virgin espoused to joseph called mary and then he brings a very strange salutation and he told her that she was going to be with child without the cooperation of a natural man and mary said well i believe god but how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man and here was gabriel's reply he says the power of the highest shall overshadow you mary was not a preacher mary was not a missionary mary was not a woman of god like deborah or some of these warriors she was just a young virgin who was espoused to a carpenter and yet she required that much power the power of the highest will overshadow you that is the basis of the possibilities that will happen in your life the same thing happened to elizabeth Elizabeth, the wife of Zechariah, for a long time she had been without a child and Gabriel appears to Zechariah, bringing him glad tidings that his wife would have a child. And the Bible even says this about John the prophet that you call the Baptist, that John was filled with the spirit right from his mother's womb. The nature of his assignment mandated that he was born with power. Are we together? Very important. The ministry of power cannot be downplayed especially in our world today believers have a lot of knowledge but the power component has largely been missing and i'm suggesting that the primary reason why i think and believe that people have rejected power because in truth they do not know what power is the idea of power that we have in church is just falling down and standing up and people rising from wheelchairs and that is wonderful but that is a, a very minute fraction of the vast possibilities that comes 
when you have power so my assignment is to charge us very briefly what exactly is the power of god what exactly is the power of god when we say i have the power of god or i want the power of god what am i saying we say it we sing it we cry it we roll on the ground desiring power and we say lord send your power what exactly are you asking for more love more power more of you in my life we sing these songs all the time more love that is understandable more power So if I random pick people from this wonderful congregation and I say, please come and stand beside me and describe for us what exactly you have been praying for. Because you see, it's difficult. The mind, from a psychological standpoint, the mind thinks in pictures. The reason why we're not able to understand a lot of spiritual concepts is because it takes the Holy Ghost to help you. The way we understand from elementary knowledge, when you begin to teach children from elementary school, they tie objects to words am i right on that so when you say orange you draw an orange when you say mango you draw a mango so if i tell you a ball your mind knows what to relate with but if i say power what exactly do you think of the closest thing that comes to your mind is fire am i right or the sun or anything that carries a semblance of force and invincibility but what exactly is the power of god so that you will know what is going to come upon you so that you will walk in that consciousness i have the power of god and then what does it do to what end do i desire and need this power power that was so important jesus did not ignore it the early church did not ignore it tarry until ye be endued with power is god speaking to someone already thank you jesus so what exactly is the power of god what is the power of god i'll give you four descriptions or definitions as a charge sadly we're not looking extensively into the subject of power so i'll just give us four descriptions to help guide our understanding as we release our faith to receive are you ready number one what is the power of god the power of god is his agency for creation the power of god is the tool the agency that he uses for creation that every time god wants to create create naturally to create in a life the agency that he deploys for that creation is called his power we considered it yesterday jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17 our lord god remember thou hast made the heavens and the earth help me by thy great power so every time god wants to make every time god wants to create that means a new body part when god wants to make anything new my goodness it is his power that means every time the power of god arrives in a location do not wonder why things can be created don't be surprised that someone can come with a missing body part and in a moment creation happens because the power of god is the agency that is responsible for creation hallelujah do you believe that our lord god the prophet says thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and thy outstretched arm in second peter chapter 1 and verse 3 second peter 1 and verse 3 apostle peter is giving us a very profound perspective second peter 1 let's look at verse 3 for sake of time 3 it says according as his divine power had given unto us how many things all things god's power is a giver 
it can provide possibilities to your life according as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness that means whatever is missing in your life that you cannot find it is within the jurisdiction of god's power to make for manifestation and to make for creation you believe that shout amen yeah. mm. who seen that this man was born blind who sinned was it him or his father jesus replies neither but that the glory of the lord be revealed and the power of god was released and that man was healed do you not see the wonder walking power of god all through scriptures every time there was need for supernatural manifestation it came by the power of god that means if you are bankrupt of the power of god in your life there are many divine possibilities as captured and revealed in scripture that may never find expression in your life never find expression in your life it takes power the agency for creation the agency for manifestation i don't need to be afraid of what is not yet in my life now because the power of god is able to transport realities from the unseen realm and compel them to be made manifest in my life do you believe that the bible says the word became flesh the word became means it was translated from a dimension and brought here what you call creation is only creation in this realm from a, a spiritual standpoint is simply transportation of realities from a realm and a dimension are we together now and to make it manifest here this is powerful ah everything that is missing in my life i don't need to fear the power of god is able to create it what does it mean to create to take raw materials from the realm of the spirit and literally materialize it to be made manifest here and now and you see it's a mystery because our finite minds and thinking cannot stretch that far so the bible simply says just like you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of her who is with child nor the way of the wind it says that's how you do not know the work of god when it has to do with manifesting the power of god to create possibilities in your life there will be gaps in your understanding there is a limit to which you can understand but it's just for you to believe that god is able to make happen today something in your life that is not there in the name of jesus christ when abraham was about to kill isaac as an act of his obedience unto god the bible records that when he told him he says stop for now i know that you fear me and i swear that in blessing i will bless you in multiplying i will multiply you and so on and so forth he said now you turn and you will see a a lamb a ram that had been caught together where did that suddenly come from i hope you know how high he had to climb to go and kill isaac that is what the power of god can do so do not be surprised that you will go back home and see an email you did not remember applying for you see if you do not know listen if you do not know what the power of god can do you will credit everything to the devil oh i believe this i believe this I believe this in the name of Jesus that what was not there and what needs to be made manifest many of you have seen things in your dreams God has shown you things for how long will they remain in the realm of the spirit there is a power component that must bring it down you've seen the job there you've seen the lifting there you've seen the child there you've seen the increase there but it takes power to transport it believe what I'm telling you from the unseen realm to be made manifest the assignment of power is that it stops that reality from just being a dream and being a vision the word became flesh and it was made manifest and we beheld we beheld we beheld hallelujah power the agency for creation the agency for manifestation and so they tell you your kidneys are failing or they now watch this watch this let me tell you how the devil has played with the minds of believers please look at me and i mean no offense i just want you to learn something watch my hand as normal as my hands are if my hand suddenly begins to swell swell and become so big nobody will ask where the extra flesh came from 
that is supposed to be a wonder itself what part of my body was reduced to have added this my weight i'm losing weight yet that very part of the hand is growing and that does not look like a miracle for many people a wonder but if it shrinks back we now say where did it go to you see what happens to our mind are you understanding my thinking now that someone you are losing weight it's not like a part of your body reduced something began to grow in a rate that your body does not use it should not grow at that rate within two three months there is a mighty growth nobody will ask where did it come from there has to be a power that is not natural that sponsored that growth because your body does not grow at that rate so you can see that the growth rate of that demonic thing, whatever it is, is inconsistent with God's programming on how your body should naturally grow. That already tell you, tells you that there is an ability that is not normal that is sponsoring that growth. Do you believe this? So why then should you doubt where at the instance of prayer, somebody will look and say, I do not find it. And you say, oh, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure are you sure are you sure creator of the universe what can't you do what can't you do Jesus just listen to what you are saying sing that part again creator of the universe what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? Beautiful song, Creator. What can't you do? If the devil can cause something you were not born with to just appear in your body, sometimes without a medical explanation can the creator of your life come back in response and take away that thing from your body is it not in your bible that every tree that my father ah, do we not study our bibles every tree this is not a prophet talking every tree that has not been planted by my father that god himself can uproot and in the name of jesus he is uprooting everything that our father did not plan uprooting everything that our father did not plan hallelujah please sit down sometimes people ask me and say apostle how do miracles happen how how can someone just be sitting on a wheelchair and in a moment the person stands up and starts walking what happened to the bones my question is how does a healthy person suddenly become bound reverse the process in your mind how does somebody whose bones are alive an adult all of a sudden wakes up one morning and the hand refuses to function don't doesn't that tell you that a stranger that while men slept jesus tried to explain someone came and planted something i'm saying it again any stranger that came to the soil of your life to plant anything that was not of god my god will uproot it 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 in the name of jesus christ please sit down the power of god his agency for creation his agency for manifestation his agency for creation his agency for manifestation number two let's hurry up blessed be the name of the lord what is the power of god are you ready now his agency for correction the power of God is his agency for correction that means when there is anything that should not be the factor that is released to correct that anomaly is called the power of God please just listen carefully his agency for correction Matthew chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3 Matthew chapter 8 please watch this 
the bible says and when he was come down from the mountain the he being jesus great multitudes followed him verse 2 the bible says and behold there came a leper and worshiped him and the leper said unto him if thou will thou canst make me clean and jesus says to him he put forth his hand and touched him and said i will be thou clean and immediately his leprosy was cleansed do you know what it means to correct to correct means to take away the default and to take away the constraining factor so that you restore whatever it is to its original state so to understand correction you need to look at a pencil and a cleaner please look up assuming i am writing one to ten and i write one two three four and five should be the sequence and for whatever reason i made a mistake and i wrote seven are we together i have destroyed that progression am i right on that the assignment of the cleaner is to wipe away that so that i can now make so that when you are reading it you will never know that anything went wrong like that let me prophesy to someone everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen someone say correction for instance please sit down for instance that you came from a family where it's been purported that nobody rises because of some demonic fraternities and covenants that were entered that you were not there now you were not there your opinion was not sought are we together but now that you are there the power of God can reach down and begin to correct things. Correct things. Take away the constraining factor. Hmm. Luke chapter 13 from verse 10. Luke chapter 13. His agency for correction. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath 11. And behold there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity how long 18 years i told you time does not change anything time only reveals it takes an encounter with power for anything to change a number of us here are science-based and when you study the works of sir isaac newton even his works on mechanics he, there there are certain laws that were put there for instance his, his first law of mechanics says that a body will remain in a state of rest are we together or uniform motion except compelled by an external force to act otherwise in other words if, if you leave this here it will remain here forever until something greater than the force keeping it pushes it am i right on that so if your destiny is this object it will remain there provided the cause provided the satanic intrusion seems to be gaining over you but when a power greater than what is keeping you arrives ah is turning things around that's that's someone's testimony right now Can you sing it one more time? That's what is happening to you right now. In the name of Jesus correction who seen that this man was born blind why is it that nobody rises in this family and the anointing comes and says it no longer matters a force greater than what is keeping you has arrived a force greater than the curse a force greater than the witchcraft a force greater than every limitation has arrived hallelujah 
sometimes when I can squeeze a little time, I just sit in the living room and I'm watching Nat Joe Wild, the National Geographic channel. And sometimes I watch with shock and wonder as animals act out the truth of scripture. So I find out that one animal can suffer, go through the, the rigor and the labor of patiently waiting, say for antelopes or some animals in their groups. And then when it traps one, the lion, or the hyena or any animal that is more powerful than that it would turn the animal that cuts that one to a, a prey now and just comes to bully it away and i said this is it for as long as the greater does not come satan looks powerful for as long as the greater does not come delay looks powerful curses look powerful the cancer looks powerful i hope you know that they all have names a name is essentially a means of identification and i hope you know that every time you give something a name you have also created a basis to personify it you call it hiv you call it cancer you call it retrogression you can give it all kinds of names including sympathetic ones like rise and fall whatever you call it the most important thing is once you have identified it you have given it a, a, a sense you have personified it and you have put it in a position where the name of jesus christ that all the power that i'm talking about has been invested in that name now you will understand what jesus meant when he said all power all authority exousia in heaven and on earth has been given to me he says go therefore that means no matter what you meet be aware that what is in you is greater than what is around hallelujah apostle you are talking like this because you don't know the kind of background that i'm coming from do you know the one i'm coming from we all came from somewhere once you are in africa there is somewhere it's not look when you are lamenting about your background don't cry to an african because you are you are, you are talking to the wrong person we all come from i assure you am i right on that but you see the the same power the bible says the body of jesus is lying down right there my goodness and that power right from hades it picked that body back to this realm if that same spirit that raised christ from the dead that that same spirit dwells in your mortal body that means the spirit is a lifter it doesn't keep people down when he finds anything and anyone that is down it must lift you someone is rising in the name of jesus someone is rising i prophesy to you you are rising you are rising and the world will see your business is rising the power that raised christ from the dead greater than any curse greater than any enchantment greater than every demonic orchestration in the name of jesus christ listen please don't just get entertained with what i'm saying what i'm telling you is truth from scripture after two days he will revive us and on the third day he will raise us up even if your situation is as heavy as the axe head it can still float back up again same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me sing it one time if you know the song same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me oh hallelujah your love that rescued the earth lives in me apostle the doctor told me that somewhere blood is following the wrong channel in my body excellent welcome to a conference where the power of god comes to correct 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 mm. correct correct that everything that has not been planted by my father following the wrong channel 
it must be corrected in one minute open your mouth and declare correct my life correct my business by your power someone is declaring in the name of Jesus correct supernaturally correct in the name of Jesus to the glory of the Father let there be a supernatural correction correct my organs correct my life correct my finances oh God by your power hallelujah hallelujah please be seated is God speaking to someone carry this revelation and you will not be scared of anomalies the moment you see things that are not right you are not scared the person who has the cleaner and the person who has the pencil who is greater the person who has the pencil can write everything that's why sometimes you allow children to write nonsense on important documents provided they are using a pencil they can go ahead and explore their creativity because in one moment you can wipe it away and it does not look like anything was written so sometimes when you see God majestically coming into your life you are like Lord Satan has been writing for too long it doesn't matter once he arrives how long did it take the power of sin to trap people but in one moment the blood of Jesus came and with one single sweep it got it out of the way say amen what is the power of God number three is God helping someone I like this third description the power of God is his agency for enforcing compliance the power of God is his agency for enforcing compliance compliance as I just said compliance I just saw like fire this is what I just saw I just saw like fire this is what when God starts showing me things like that it's not because that's when he started working but he's only showing you because he's doing something in the life of someone hallelujah his agency write this down for enforcing compliance follow carefully I'm going to give you three scriptures and I want us to study them carefully his agency for enforcing please underline enforcing compliance Luke chapter 4 please from verse 31 watch this hmm. compliance immediately suggests that there is a possibility for rebellion am I right on that when you pass laws you put systems even within society when the senate or the house or whatever when they finally pass a law there are usually systems through agencies that are put together that becomes the eyes of the law am i right on that and their assignment is to insist that there must be compliance and came down to capernaum we're reading luke 4 31 uh-huh a city of Galilee and taught them on the Sabbath day Jesus now the Bible says and they were astonished at his doctrine for his word was with power and the Bible says and in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice he was disrupting service saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us i know thee who thou art the holy one of god we're reading to 37 and jesus rebuked them saying i love this hold thy peace and come out of him and when the devil had thrown him in the midst he came out of him and hurt him not say compliance the Bible says, and they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. Other versions say, and they obey him. And the Bible says, the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. 
let me tell you the truth the zenith of power and authority is when you speak and there is obedience is one thing to speak genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 and 4 jesus god himself gives us his model of power the bible says and god said verse 3 there was darkness and chaos and all of that god said let there be light and your bible says there was am i right on that and the bible says god saw the light that it was good and it divided the light from darkness so when you make decrees and then there is rebellion to your decree it means your power is questionable am i right on that yeah. obedience to instructions obedience to decrees is how you know that power is available within a place am i right on that yes and my bible says and thou shalt decree a thing is it in your bible and it shall be established unto you in fact it says where the word of a king is it says there is power what kind of power power that compels compliance the bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that satan is very stubborn just because scripture says it does not mean he will obey not without force it is written i and the children that the lord has given me we are for signs and for wonders in israel satan does not care even to jesus he came and stubbornly came and was wasting his time and jesus said get thee satan he came to peter and tried to manipulate peter and jesus looked at him and said get behind me satan is that true compliance there are many believers who say things and it looks like devils and demons and situations and circumstances just tell us and say by what power for instance the sons of Sceva what they said was right but the power that enforces compliance was not there we adjure you by Jesus and he said Jesus I know Paul I know I always add my name Joshua Selman I know he says but who are thou From today you will speak and you will see it come to pass in the name of jesus in the name of jesus that you can look at situations and circumstances and say peace be still was that not what jesus said why are you so fearful oh you of little faith he said the bible says he got up wiped sleep from his eyes and spoke to the wind and to the waves and said shalom be still the bible says there was an instant calm and the disciples marveled and said what manner of man is this that even the wind and the waves obey him obey him bringing everything to the obedience of christ do you believe what i'm telling you jesus sends the disciples two by two the bible records and they went and returned back rejoicing you know what their joy was they said we are shocked this thing that used to happen to you has started happening to us too that even the devils were subject to us in thy name and jesus laughed and said that that don't rejoice over that but rejoice that your names are written in the book of life but then that they rejoice there is nothing as powerful as the realm of the spirit being obedient to your word it enforces the fact that you are a king indeed and let me tell you when there is a track record of your speakings coming to pass in your life and that of others that is value that men will never even leave you alone they will pursue you to the cave they will pursue you to the mountains because they have learned that the word of god like samuel is upon your mouth and for samuel the bible says none of his word fell to the ground say power, power. Hmm. the centurion comes to jesus the equivalent of a captain in the army and he says please come my son is sick unto death and would you help me and he said no you are a, a noble man in the army i will respect you and come to your house and the centurion gives us a very strong lesson that jesus himself acknowledged the centurion said you do not need to come under my roof for i am a man under authority in other words when it comes to do with power and authority i understand i am under the authority of the government of rome and on account of that authority i say unto one go 
go and he goeth i say to one come and he cometh do this and he does and i know that you are not alone you also came under the authority of heaven so speak the word only and jesus said i've not found this faith in other words who taught you this where did you learn this no not in israel he said Ah, the believer has such a phenomenal advantage ladies and gentlemen that i can stand from this pulpit and speak without going there the actual location because where the word of a king is there is power the president of this nation or any noble leader across the globe they can sit down and issue a statement sometimes you they don't even have to speak it is in writing provided they append their signature there it becomes law There are many things we have been telling situations and circumstances but they have not been able to come to a point of obedience because we have not realized that the power of god is and has the assignment of enforcing compliance satan get lost and he says who are you talking about me you know how old i've been here and then you say it's true it's true so what do we do about this now if you use your own authority as a believer you become cheated immediately but remember the bible says blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hallelujah so do not wonder when you see demons and infirmities and situations obey that you can look at someone with no job and say in the name of jesus i open the two lift gates of lagos that that which belongs to you must find you and the person returns with a testimony it is called compliance i hope you know that creation has an ear my bible says let everything that hath an ear listen he that hath an ear let him hear and the prophet will speak and say o f hear ye the word of the lord you just see it as a an extended mass full of dust but in the realm of the spirit everything can hear it is one quality animate and inanimate things have biology and science will teach us from a scientific standpoint that they are living and non-living things and we respect them we'll keep it so but i can tell you from a spiritual standpoint there is no such thing as non-living the concept of non-living only exists within the frame of science everything can hear the word of the lord everything in fact everything can hear it just depends on who is speaking That means your situation as it's not only you that came to the church your situation is also listening to this sermon you are not the only one who is listening remember when the prophet was talking with the woman the jar of oil was hearing too i have nothing except and i'm sure the oil was saying but i've been here and the prophet said you think you are the only one i'm talking to you go and borrow vessels borrow not a few and watch another audience in your house that you're not even aware of the oil began to multiply everything can hear everything can hear barrenness can hear everything can hear retrogression can hear everything and when the lord speaks even by his power there must be compliance in the name of jesus christ number four very quickly has god helped someone already what is the power of god finally the power of god is his agency for bringing salvation his agency for bringing salvation i said i was going to give us three scriptures for enforcing compliance let me just give us the two remaining we'll not read it but i'll just give it to us please write for reference matthew 8 24 to 27 matthew 8 24 to 27 and then psalm 66 verse 3 i'll take it again matthew 8 24 to 27 and psalm 66 and verse 3 now number four his agency for bringing salvation say salvation salvation, salvation here is not just limited to the new birth experience salvation is deliverance in its entirety are we together it comes from the greek word soteria it captures within it healing deliverance lifting breakthrough anything that sustains the ability of cutting to cut you away from that which stands as a resistance is called salvation 
acts chapter 4 and verse 33 let me request that we read together when we have it projected acts 4 33 ready one to read it says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection uh-huh and great grace one more time and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all thank you god bless you please be seated the bible says with great power not with great stories with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection that means it took more than an intellectual discussion to prove the validity of his resurrection it was with great power great power great power romans 1 and verse 16 here's what it says romans 1 and verse 16 i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ he says for it is the power not just that it has the power it is the power of god it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the jew first and to the greek what is the power of god the agency for bringing salvation salvation for the lost salvation for the downtrodden i sat quietly as i listened to our precious people testifying freedom liberty from depression and as they mentioned all those cases you know quite frankly i wasn't really focusing on all the story i just wanted to know what and what i would deal with from the stories they were saying <laughs> so i wanted to hear okay i hear depression i hear this i hear that because they must bow today today in the name of jesus christ salvation what does it mean to be saved to be rescued from danger what does it mean to be saved to be taken to a place of safety where you are far within the grip of danger and evil that is what salvation means first it starts with the lost but it does not just end with the lost even believers who are saved the bible says the name of the lord is a strong tower am i right on that he says the righteous so they are already righteous but they can run to it and they are saved because there is still another kind of disaster the devil want to bring even upon the righteous in fact the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord by this power delivered him from them all from them all many are the afflictions of the righteous I've often said that it is not unusual for believers to have challenges. It is defeat that is unusual. It is not unusual for believers to have challenges. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But victory is what the word of God guarantees. And the power of God is the principal sponsor for the believer's victory. Hallelujah. the great power of god acts when you read acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34 just write for reference excuse me acts 16 25 to 34 just write for reference the bible talks about paul and silas that at midnight they prayed and they sang praises unto god loud enough for the prisoners to hear them then when you read on the bible says suddenly there was an earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking and the bible says immediately all doors open and everyone's band was loose from his hand you read down to 34 and you see that as a result of that mighty manifestation the jailer and his family came to the saving knowledge of jesus am i right on that the jailer took a sword and wanted to kill himself and paul said, peter said no 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 do not harm yourself paul my, my apologies do not harm yourself we are all here and he said wow what then do i need to do to be saved and that gave room for the gospel i teach our school of ministry students and one of the things when we discuss evangelism one of the strategies for evangelism is evangelism by power there is a dimension of evangelism that happens on account of the supernatural manifestation of god's power i've had the honor and the privilege 
to preach this gospel across region and nations by the grace of God and I have seen many run to Jesus when they see because according to uh, to John chapter 4 and verse 48 John 4 48 it says except ye see signs and wonders ye will not believe except ye see signs and wonders I read stories of men and women, many who have joined the cloud of witnesses like T.L. Osborne, R.W. Schanbach, Reinhard Bonke of blessed memory, and these great men who served the purposes of God with all their hearts, they took more than a message to the nations. It took the, the coordinated effort of the message and the power. One more time, the message and the power the message and the power let me show you one last scripture to buttress on this point and we begin to pray acts chapter 8 beginning from verse 5 acts chapter 8 and verse 5 i love the bible the bible says then philip went down to the city of samaria and preached christ unto them what did he preach christ unto them verse 6 the bible says and the people with one accord they gave heed to those things which philip speak why did he get that attention from them hearing and seeing the miracles which he did you may have heard me say it and i'll repeat it again that the christian experience was never supposed to be heard alone don't just keep saying god is good there has to be an experience that backs that statement you can taste and see not just hear and assume or hear and doubt you can taste and see the goodness of the lord has an experience to it for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many that were taken with palsies and that were lame were healed as a result verse 8 there was great joy great joy among the the foundations of sapphire there was great joy at the king's court what was the basis of the joy that as a result of this conference look what god has done look at the mighty manifestations open doors reconciliations this is the kingdom when jesus sent the disciples in matthew chapter 10 and verse 1 and then we'll go to verse 7 let's look at matthew 10 verse 1 and verse 7 just to add one more scripture and when he had called them unto him his 12 disciples the bible says he gave them power am i right on that he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases verse 7 he says as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand but don't stop there verse 8 validate your speakings by healing the sick cleansing the lepers raising the dead casting out devils freely ye have received freely give this is the gospel that you say jesus is able to do this then by the investment of his power upon your life there becomes a performance and a manifestation you know let me tell you the truth growing up i wondered why people seem to be cold towards the gospel I watched sincere preachers preach and they would sweat and shout sincerely so and at the end of it with such a large crowd after almost begging you see one person just stroll out as though he was just coming out to sympathize with the man of God and he does not even recite the salvation prayer and I said come on no this cannot be God yet you can know by the spirit not by condemnation that there are many sinners in that meeting you look left you look right they are all there and yet with the altar call none of them comes out and i said i think the missing key i researched and i found out by scripture and experience that for many it was because there was no demonstration no demonstration no demonstration i have seen and sometimes I get full of tears as I make the altar call and you see all kinds of people including the most like unlikely people run to Jesus run to the cross in total genuine surrender you will know that their coming out was sincere genuine because by their personality they are not even the kind of people who embarrass themselves to come out like that but when the power of God is put on display it can swallow up the pride of any man and bring them before the cross if you believe that say amen, amen. 
and i strongly believe with all of my heart that even today will be no different that there are people whilst you are listening to me you will know by the conviction of the spirit that it is time for the power of god to do its work in you bringing you to that saving knowledge yes for the bible says there is no other name given unto man by which we must be saved the name of jesus that's what god is presenting to us more than the miracles of healing and the rest the greatest gift god gives men is himself himself greater love hath no man than this than a man laid down his life for his friend am i right on that i just feel stirred in my heart to do the altar call before we pray that for the sake of someone in this place i know that yesterday we had the altar call but there is no taking chances when it has to do with the life of god listen ladies and gentlemen this is beyond a call to christianity this is beyond just a church activity jesus christ proposes his own life his own life you have trusted things of lesser value you have so wholeheartedly surrendered yourself to things of lesser value that had no track record of preserving you it is wisdom to give him a chance to manage your life for the bible says i know whom i have believed it says and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed he only keeps that which is committed unto him the lord jesus brought you here this afternoon to make a conscious decision for jesus now the beautiful thing about god is that it is within your power to reject him you can, as an act of your own volition, reject Jesus. That means you can sit down and say, I have heard the word intelligently communicated, but I choose as an act of my will to reject you, Jesus. He will respect your choice, except that you will only be scheduling seasons of pain and tragedy, both in this life and in the life to come. For the Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Many have left and they left without making this noble decision this according to scripture is the wisest decision that any man can make in this side of god's kingdom and the holy spirit the lord of the harvest himself is giving you an opportunity i know you came to receive your prayer requests are in the basket and they'll be dealt with shortly but i'm presenting to you afresh jesus christ the one you rejected yesterday he peter while speaking on the day of pentecost said let it be known to you that this same jesus that you have been crucified has today been exalted as lord and christ the bible says when they heard him they were caught to the heart and they said men and brethren what shall we do peter replies and he says repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise he said for the promise is unto you and to your children your children's children as many as are far off even those that the lord will call the spirit of god is hovering around this place convicting people and that includes the person watching in your home the one watching probably by way of rebroadcast in your office across the globe jesus is calling you this is not a christian's call this is jesus calling I will count one to five like I did yesterday. I don't know who needs to be bold to respond to the call of the Spirit. To say, Apostle, I'm not going to be ashamed. I will come and stand right here before the people of God. I begin my counting now. Leave your seat and come and stand right here. Nothing to be ashamed of. You are coming to Jesus, the lover of your soul. One, please stand for sake of space. Two, is this the best we can do to encourage those coming? There is only one name. Come. There is only one name with power to save. Keep coming. Don't be ashamed. Power to save. Hallelujah. Come. Come. No matter how far, make your way to the front. With power to say. With power to say.
I rejoice over everyone who is standing here. We used to sing a song in the seminary. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. I appreciate every one of you for the courage to come and stand before Jesus. The Bible declares that whoever is not ashamed of him before men, that he will not be ashamed of you even before his father. I salute you for the courage. You are standing here not before a man, not in front of a church. You are standing in front of the throne. Jesus himself, the king, the lover of your soul, seated on that throne. Now, you're going to be given a green card. The counselors will hand you over a card. And I will please request that after your prayer, you will take the time to fill the card legibly. This is so that they can follow up on you and just help you to stand as far as the knowledge of God is concerned. But I want to lead you to make this noble decision. I presume that some of you are rededicating your lives to Jesus. It doesn't matter if this is your first time or a rededication, you're most welcome. Please lift your right hand above your head as a sign of surrender. And I want you to say this after me. And when you say it, mean it from the depth of your heart. Mean it from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. This is unto Jesus himself. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I have heard your word. I believe in you. That you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my life as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from today and forever i am a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb i go forward ever and backward never amen please keep those lovely hands up i'm praying for you now father thank you for this once the bible declares that no man cometh to the father except by him and it says blessed is everyone that the lord causes to approach him these have come by the leading of the spirit i declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven in the name of jesus and i declare that you are bona fide recipients of the life of god based on the authority of scripture i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life the appetite to rebel against god and his ways leaves your life now and any demon spirit that ties you down keeping you bound i declare you are released right now in the name of jesus christ i declare that you are a child of god a son and a daughter in the kingdom to the glory of the name of the lord you go forward ever and backward never in jesus mighty name i pray amen and amen god bless you so here's what i want you to do for me just one more instruction i'll please request that you follow our mother and the counselors who have a word with you and you quickly come to join us as we pray over the requests now let's celebrate them as they go thank you thank you thank you let's celebrate them as they go it's a new season for them I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord sustains me. But now, O oh Lord, at a shield for
about to pray three things now that i'm going to do number one is we're going to pray and cry and say father my life is barren of genuine spiritual power let power from on high that empowers me to be a faithful witness bringing creation bringing correction compelling compliance and bringing salvation to my life and then through me to others you're going to cry desperately like blind Bartimaeus cried when that power comes upon your business it will do what it was sent to do when it comes upon your family to do what it was sent to do you're going to open your mouth and pray no distraction looking on to Jesus you're going to pray from the depth of your heart go ahead and pray power from on high lord release power upon my life upon my christian experience power that causes me to pray power that causes me to serve the purposes of god power that breaks every addiction power that breaks every infirmity someone pray in the name of jesus the son of the living god power that translates me from a failure to a victor in experience shalagabrante ke parako sadash karoska da branda ga parako shalegre ke berete ke parusia ta engrata ga parako shalegre te bereko sada branda gada someone is praying power from on high power from on high in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all I have seen what the power of God can do not just in terms of miracle signs and wonders it takes power to move forward he says Moses tell the people that they go forward they were stuck the Red Sea before them Egyptians behind them defeat was imminent but not when power came he said tell the people to go forward and with one blast of his nostrils he parted the Red Sea hither and thither and the Bible says they walked on dry ground hallelujah now we're going to pray over the requests but I want to take a minute or two to minister to you so I want you to pray that which must live your life now not tomorrow that which must live your life now not later I like you to agree with God in prayer it lives finally is it that shame is it that reproach someone pray don't doubt don't doubt remember we discuss here extensively on how far God is able to go on account of his saints and that he desires that his power be revealed in the midst of his people this plague this infirmity you must live my life now hallelujah I remember I once prayed for a woman very interesting thing you know how a cancer patient who has gone through chemo you know how sometimes they lose their hair this is what was happening to the woman and she had never gone through chemo just like that wonderful beautiful woman began to lose beauty and color because of some demonic thing her hair literally started falling and they went to the hospital and they could not diagnose medically that there was anything wrong there is no limit to how far satan can go to cause pain to believers but the bible says for this purpose was the son of god made manifest that he may destroy the works of the evil one hallelujah let me pray for the sick now 
I want you to lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle you can stand for yourself you can stand for your loved ones and I want you to believe we're out of time but I'm going to do this very fast and I want to minister to you my God I sense such a strong anointing here just lay your hands wherever it is you are trusting God for a miracle please don't allow the devil lie to you and say that's how they prayed for you that day uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. leave that day now you are in his presence lay your hands if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest or your head you can stand in for your loved one whether they are in the hospital wherever they are Jesus something special supernatural about your name Jesus something happens thank you Jesus he gave us power to pray for the sick to release people from all kinds of bondages and this is why he sent us even here and as I pray for you I want you to shout amen and I'm going to ask you to check yourself don't be ashamed don't be afraid you will marvel and wonder at what the power of God is able to do bringing you healing I'm seeing someone literally burning like fire burning the person from feet to head and it is a process of cleansing it's a spiritual cleansing that is happening at the end of that experience you will find out that every infirmity that has plagued you is living right now living by the spirit of the living god living by the spirit of god now in the name of jesus the son of the living god the resurrected king i decree and declare every spirit that is back of any infirmity I command you to give way now in the name of Jesus every spirit of infirmity I command you to give way now in the name of Jesus I command you to give way now in the name of Jesus I command you to give way now in the name of Jesus everyone sick in body I declare be healed now believe it be healed now migraine headache be healed now peptic ulcer be healed now there's someone god is healing you have frequent urination this can become an embarrassment sometimes you can go to ease yourself so many times and it's something that you've it has embarrassed you again and again the lord is healing you right now the Lord is showing me someone you have very severe pain around your joints not just your knee but your joints I don't know if it's something that is related to your 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 genotype or something but in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is bringing you healing now bringing you healing now bringing you healing now in the name of Jesus I've seen this case before and I've prayed on it I don't know what program quite a number of times you are not a nursing mother yet you are lactating you are not a nursing mother yet you are lactating producing breast milk in the name of Jesus I don't know what the medical condition is but I declare your healing now your healing now there's someone you have some kind of skin infection in fact your back it looks like eczema but it has refused to go this is what i'm seeing in my vision there's some skin infection irritation sometimes it pains you um it itches you very discomforting itch you will know you are healed because the itching stops now the itching stops now by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ 
there is a man here god is showing me a condition this is a condition that is common to men and this is something that if not dealt with sustains the ability to destroy even your marriage but i'm praying healing right now supernatural healing for you high blood pressure goes down now peptic ulcer goes down now if you have any loved one who is in the hospital in the name of jesus i declare cancer dies from their body cancer dies from their body cancer dies from their body healing for kidneys in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing a woman you keep taking in and it does not get up to four months there must be a miscarriage and this happens when you have a dream and you start bleeding and that's the end of it i cause that devil now in the name of jesus christ i'm still praying omnipotent father of mercy and grace in this place you went to take your bath and water entered your right ear and from that day till today you still feel as if your ear has not been released it's not like you are not hearing but you know how you feel when there's water there's someone like that with that condition the power of god is touching you right now the power of god is touching you right now you are not able to bend over backwards properly because there is excruciating pain just at your back right here in the name of jesus i decree and declare that after this prayer life and healing comes for you life and healing comes for you now the lord is showing me someone there, there's somebody here there is a particular food you cannot eat the moment you eat that food is like rashes breaks out of your body i don't know what food that is now you are not able to eat the moment you eat it there is a reaction in the name of jesus christ the power of god is touching you right where you are right where you are you have severe pain heart your heart you are having a serious problem if you lie down on this side and you wake up it's as though blood is not pumping properly in jesus name that manifestation of the spirit of death i cause it from your life now whether i mention your case or not in the name of jesus the resurrected king be healed be healed be healed right now be healed by the power of the holy ghost be healed now the lord is showing me someone ah, i need to pray for you because with what i'm seeing your entire respiratory system is under attack it looks like cough or catar but there is a build up of a lot of things from what i'm seeing this is affecting you because sometimes when you lie down you have to use your mouth to breathe you can't use your nose to breathe this thing can you wake up in the night choking the person i'm talking about in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that plague of death leaves you now that plague of death leaves you now that plague of death leaves you now in the name of jesus even though i'm praying for the sick for now but the lord is showing me someone's case so i will announce it there is a serious problem you have in your place of work it looks like a group of people just came and ganged up against you for things that you cannot remember doing and i need to pray for you because i'm seeing a board sitting on your issue and they are signing a letter that you should be relieved this is what i'm seeing but in the name of jesus god reveals to redeem i don't know i don't know who has that situation but we call upon the god of heaven let mercy prevail over judgment let mercy prevail over judgment in the name of jesus let mercy prevail over judgment by the power of the holy ghost now here's what i want you to do i'm going to ask you to check yourself 
we are still going to do some more prayer but i want you to check yourself the moment you find out that you were part of the case that i mentioned or you can do something now you couldn't do let's just have one or two testimonies and then i'll be ready to minister deliverance and to pray over the sick i want you to check yourself do what you couldn't do the moment you find out that the power of god has touched you don't be ashamed don't be afraid make your way to the front as we celebrate you right now check yourself do what you couldn't do hold on i'm seeing someone um this is a periodic occurrence and you were told that it happens when it is rainy season you start having boils at specific parts of your body this is what i'm seeing your legs and sometimes you know your armpit and the rest are, this is what god is showing me certain boils start coming out and they say that it's associated with rainy season in the name of jesus i don't know who that person is but i want you to know you are healed now the power of god is touching you right now to the glory of the name of the lord now please check yourself very quickly and make your way to the front right now but i want to speak to someone whose name who is messy messy i'm hearing the name messy is there someone with the name messy i just want to pray over you Mercy, do we have someone with that name? Mercy, you discuss your problem with somebody, and when you discuss your problem with somebody, you agree that God will visit you in this conference. And I want you to know that God is a prayer answering God. You believe in the power of god i'm going to pray for you mercy there is someone god is showing me you are a sickler i'm a sickler you are wearing black you are a woman black with red i'm seeing black with red is there you are not a young person or like a is there someone like that My sister, I hope you are not embarrassed. Please don't be embarrassed. This is a family of faith. It's not, it's just a description, not this God, ba. Father, I'm praying right now. Mercy. Let me start with mercy. God brought you out here this is incredible i'm laying hands on people but the person the power of god is falling on is in the crowd please when you find that person i want you to bring that person for me there is a mighty impartation that is happening to someone i'm praying for people here but the person that the power of god is falling on is somewhere in the crowd and when that happens please i want that particular i know that there might be a number of people but i want to pray for that particular person it's like a tsunami a rain of god's anointing is going to rest upon you in the name of jesus please when that happens let me have that person okay our, you brought our children too okay no problem since they are here we're standing for them mercy in the name of jesus i am praying for you that every planting that is not of god plaguing your life in the name of jesus the son of the living god let it give way now everything associated with witchcraft my sister please look at me tap this woman for me the lord is saying i should tell you remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old he said for behold i do a new thing i do a new thing in the name of jesus christ please bring them here i declare the power of god in the name of jesus where is the person there is a gentleman here and also a lady you are trusting god for scholarship full scholarship this is what i'm seeing i, I presume that many people are praying but this person this is a full scholarship to go and study this is what i'm seeing this is something you are aware of it's not something you are praying for now it's been a project because it is impossible with with what is around you no just lift your hands who is that person ah our mommy is gone. okay oh you are standing for someone 
Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Praise God. Okay. We are going to pray. You will be surprised. You will return back with testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Mercy, I stretch my hands over you, your home. Let there be a miracle right now. I release you from every orchestration of witchcraft. In Jesus' name. Now, let me pray for my... God bless you. Let me pray for my people with the, the um, genotype. Thing. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy. I've, I've had the honor and the privilege of praying for people, especially our precious ones, when they have all kinds of crises and it's not a nice sight, I'm telling you. For some of them, it's literally like they're standing between life and death. I don't know why the Holy Ghost brought this to, but you see, the thing with God is when he speaks to one, he speaks to all. He's the one who knows the pain and the burden that people came here with. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I stretch my hands upon our precious people right now. I decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of God in your body right now, let it go. Right now, I place an anointing upon all of you and I declare, let it go. We declare a change of genotype. We declare a change of genotype. We declare a change of genotype. Change, help her please. We declare a change of genotype by the power of the Holy Ghost. And in the name of Jesus, every devil, every spirit connected to bloodline and ancestry that wants to trap you, including our little ones, here at this conference, we declare that you are released now. In the mighty name of Jesus, by the power of prophecy, I declare that this crisis comes to an end in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for the ones trusting God for scholarship like God revealed to me, I declare prophetically, you may not see the wind, you may not see rain, but may my God raise helpers for you. May my God raise helpers for you. May my God raise helpers for you. May my God raise helpers for, help for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have you found that person under the anointing? I want to speak. Who is that person? This lady, where are you from, my dear? Huh? I'm going to pray for you. Father, there is a reason why you brought this, your daughter. I decree and declare that everything that has to do with witchcraft connected to Benin. Benin, Benin, Benin. Paraso kela subrendi gevalasu kiatapas. I'm seeing a wind blowing right now. The power of God is moving across. It's, it's like a deliverance that is happening. I'm seeing the power of God moving. Now, let's not litter the place, but please, I want you to bring for me the people under the anointing right now. I stretch my hands. Everyone who has been under the yoke of witchcraft and every kind of satanic manipulation, in the name of Jesus, let that fire, let it rest upon you now and bring you deliverance. Let it rest upon you now and bring you deliverance. Let it rest upon you now and bring you deliverance. Let it rest upon you now and bring you deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is showing me the feet of people tied. I'm seeing it tied so that you cannot move. That means you are stagnated and there is no progress. I don't know who that is. But in the name of Jesus, please bring them out if you can. I decree and declare. At the count of three, may I request that you shout Jesus, that name that is above every other name. Are you ready now? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Jesus. Out of their life now. Release their destinies 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 now. Release your destinies now in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. 
it says and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty i declare be released now 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 hear me every power of witchcraft sitting on any destiny here money apakatos ketebekata in the name of jesus may that fire fall now may that fire fall now may that fire fall now every altar that has spoken against the purposes of god in your life i command that it gives way now in the mighty and marvelous name of jesus christ let them go now release their destinies now for the bible says he who the son sets free it says he's free indeed is free indeed is free indeed free indeed free indeed hear me there are people here under the sound of my voice you keep seeing things but your hand never reaches them just when you are about to grab them something comes i decree and declare whatever stops you from receiving i stand upon the grace that backs this commission and i declare be released right now be released right be released right now be released right now by fire be released right now be released right now be released right now hallelujah the lord is asking me to pray and break people free from all kinds of addictions all kinds of addictions addictions that have tied people down tied their destinies down you want to serve the lord but here comes these addictions i'm praying right now that anyone under the sound of my voice and following who has been a victim of any kind of addiction at the count of three may that fire come upon you and break that appetite one two three break 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 addictions break addictions break addictions break addictions break in the name of jesus the son of the living god in the name of jesus christ ladies and gentlemen please hear me hear me the lord is bringing liberty to these people the bible says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of jacob shall possess their possession for all of you who are in front here i declare by the blood of the lamb be free right now be free right now be free right now be free right now by the blood of the lamb every legal case that satan has over you we plead the blood be free right now be free right now be free right now in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the name of the lord can i pray for those trusting god for jobs you don't have to come out but i want you please believe in miracles god is not a herbalist but there is a name that is above every other name let me pray right now anyone here trusting god for the miracle of a job you don't have to come out right where you are in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare 
between now and the next three months may my god surprise you 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 in the name of jesus and if you are standing here for any of your children i declare shame is terminated permanently hallelujah the lord is showing me is asking me to pray there is a family where marriages never work the people must return back to their parents homes i don't know where that family is but in the name of jesus i decree and declare that the spirit responsible for this demonic thing it is against the will of god let it be broken now broken now broken now hallelujah now i want to say something don't be embarrassed is is that the lord is asking me to say it don't feel bad I, i'm not condemning but there are two ladies here you don't have to come out you are living in a house with a man that is not your husband you are not married to i don't mean to condemn you after this service go and pack out of that place get out of that place be a responsible lady if you want to see the hand of god there are things you must do I, I'm saying it because God has asked me to say it. go and get out of that place in the name of Jesus Christ and trust the Lord to help you and show you mercy because you would destroy your destiny and I assure you it is pain being programmed in your life hallelujah 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 the Lord is saying rebuke the pattern of death rebuke the pattern of death reduce the pattern of death this is what I'm saying. Hear me. It's like every specific time period you hear that someone has died. Every time period. I don't know who the devil has programmed to be next, but in the name of Jesus, for you and for your family. Oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? I declare you and your loved ones are delivered from death. You and your loved ones are delivered from death. You and your loved ones are delivered from death. You and your loved ones are delivered from death. Hallelujah. Listen. I don't know what may have happened around your life and I sympathize with you. But please hear me. You have a right to stand and insist. I shall not die. Please say it. One more time. Say I shall not die. But leave and declare the works of the Lord let the devil hear you I shall not die but leave and declare the works of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah you may return back to your seat rejoicing we are still praying two more prayers I'm not sure we may have time to take testimonies my apologies if that does not happen you can always testify but hear me please hear me listen listen the number one reason why people rise in life is the favor of God the number one reason why people fail in life is the bankruptcy of favor you see the proof of the favor of God upon the life of an individual is not naira and cobble it's not pounds and dollars that is the proof of wisdom that is the proof of value the real proof of favor watch this the real proof of favor upon the life of an individual if you care to know is loyalty to the hearts of men that the hearts of men become loyal you see if you are given an opportunity to choose between money and men choose men a thousand times before you choose money money only has its value because of men there are many of us here you are in the midst of several helpers but the mantle of favor that will compel them to remember you is not there so you see me i know this i know this one and they keep lifting distant relatives and people they do not know and yet you are in the midst of plenty do you know why because people do not just help they are made to help hallelujah let me show you a scripture and then we'll pray job 42 and verse 10 
once upon a time in the life of this man the bible called him the wealthiest man in the east had wonderful children and tragedy broke and in one day he lost everything that mattered to him plus that he now had a terrible incurable infirmity that ate him up reduced him to become a shadow of himself job was so frustrated several people came from across the regions to sympathize with him his family left him and even the wife that he had the last person standing one time she said job i'm tired cause god and die it's easy to think she was a wicked woman until you know what it means to stand behind a man under a prolonged period of pain like that but something happened in job 42 and verse 10 i want you to see it and please do not forget this scripture the bible says and the lord turned the captivity of job when he prayed for his friends also the lord gave job who gave job who gave job the lord gave job twice as much as he had before but verse 11 tells us how it happened he says then came there unto him all his brethren that means they were always there when he was suffering but none of them came that man sat alone with his wife he had this many brethren and yet none of them would attend to him the bible says and his sisters and all they that were that had been of his acquaintance before the bible says and they eat they did eat bread with him in his house so they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the lord had brought upon him i want you to read the last line if you're a christian one to read every man okay stop there read from every man the first five words that you see ready one to read every man also gave him one more time one more time so every man is a giver including the one who has refused to give to you the bible says under a certain condition every man this was a man who was crying and praying you would think he had no family imagine that person sitting somewhere in the island here you would pass him and say oh dear everybody you see roaming around the street has a family somewhere and god will always leave himself a witness but it is the favor that is on your life that will compel men this man is crying languishing in pain and all of those every men left him but when god was ready to give supernaturally they came they ate bread with him they identified with him and the bible says every man gave him every man including your uncle the one you think is stingy every man including the ceo don't just blame people and say they will not give me your prayer is lord the favor that will compel men i'm saying this because this is what i want to pray over you every man gave him a piece of money and every man gave him an earring of gold yet verse 10 will tell us it was god that gave him so god's system is always men god gave job twice but how did that twice manifest every man so when god wants to give you ah, rest round about he plants that rest in the hearts of men someone calls you from us and say you've been on my mind in the last three days you say no i'm not surprised i was in a conference the last three days do you believe what i'm telling you there are men in this season who will step into prepared blessings this is listen this is not just some carnal marketing of materialism the purpose for all of these things is so that we can have the time the liberty and the comfort to serve his purposes you will never be able to serve the purposes of the kingdom in poverty in pain satan uses the strategy of material distraction to make you to not be focused on that which is eternal so the way god cures that destruction is to make for abundant supplies according to second corinthians 9 and verse 8 he says and god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work not in the absence of sufficiency 
you're not going to be faithful in prayer church meeting when you have five children with no school fees there are bills there you are fighting to ensure you are not being called an irresponsible father or mother where will you have the time to lead prayers it distraction financial distraction and all kinds of things these have been effective tools that satan has used to derail people's passion towards god he said tell my people that they may go pharaoh let my people go that they may go and serve me they couldn't serve him effectively in egypt when they were under the taskmasters making straw and all of that but when they were left released they now could go and serve him can i pray for favor over someone father in the name of jesus you are the one who gave gifts to men you are the one who shows men favor you are the one who connects men to the hearts of kings in the name of jesus here at this conference standing in partnership with the grace upon this house and upon this commission i decree and declare for everyone who has been bankrupt of the favor of god begin to walk in the favor of god from today begin to walk in unusual favor extraordinary favor may god raise men for your sake raise men for your company raise men for your business in the name of jesus christ hallelujah when favor rests upon your life it can make for the book of remembrance you see the bible tells us that the works of men are being recorded in a book do you believe that and if your works have been recorded it is archived for a time of honor when god will open and bless you in the similitude of what happened to mordecai mordecai saved the life of king ahasuerus it was archived but he was not rewarded then the bible says and that night could not ahasuerus sleep and he said bring me the chronicles when they opened the book he found where mordecai saved his life like you helped somebody who would have died like you are a lawyer who advocated for someone who now has an estate and yet there is no reward i'm praying for you whoever has forgotten you i call upon the god of my covenant that in this season may you be remembered for good may you be remembered for good may you be remembered for good in the name of jesus christ hallelujah can we pray in the spirit as we pray over the request Please bring the request here. Can you help me, sir? Someone is praying. These Egyptians that I see today, I see them no more forever. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. This is the scriptural basis for what we're doing. Philippians 4 and verse 6. Let's read together. One to read. Be anxious. The word careful there is anxious. Be careful for nothing, it says here. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. You don't assume that because he's all-knowing. After all, he knows. It is the responsibility dimension of your work with God. The Bible says, let your request be made known. Whenever I pray for requests, I pray because number one the Bible says so number two I pray because there is truly a covenant of answered prayer hallelujah and for those of you who care you may have heard my story when I had the honor and the privilege of lying and praying alone in the prayer room of our father and the Lord Baba Deboe my prayer unto God when I was there was not give me tea give me grace I said Lord whatever you have placed upon the head of our father that he will make decrees and say there is someone here may doors be open and doors open i said lord may that same grace and god had my prayer mantles have a location they don't just come from nowhere the bible says and without every contradiction the lesser is blessed of the greater you have a track record of keeping your word you're not a man to Please just stretch your hands towards me. 
you don't have to kneel i will do the kneeling and we are going to pray i want you to believe this i have seen phenomenal answers to prayers in possible situations you see no one is reading this you wrote it by yourself is the most accurate expression of your desires and the bible says unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come i am bowing before the god of heaven and as you begin to pray i like you to agree that the same hands that wrote this is the same hand that will receive the answer go ahead and begin to pray everyone pray in the name of Jesus Christ as I pray I want you to shout a believing amen in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare over every request here presented before the Lord that these Egyptians you see today may you see them no more forever 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 in the name of jesus christ every financial issue here represented i call upon the god of heaven ebenezer even the helper of men let every financial shame and reproach be turned to a testimony every family issue here represented marriages that are about to tear apart or have torn and in need of reconciliation issues with children spouses in the name of jesus let there be restoration every career issue here represented in the name of jesus i decree and declare let there be testimonies let there be miracles let there be testimonies let there be miracles let there be testimonies let there be miracles in the name of jesus christ and hear me any long-standing issue that has been here for years for decades by the power that raised Christ from the dead, it comes to an end finally. It comes to an end finally. In the name of Jesus. Therefore, we decree and declare that the same hand that wrote this request, may it be the same hand that receives a testimony. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray hallelujah praise the name of the lord one last encouragement i want you to please listen to me it's been a burden in my heart and i've been crying it to believers as many who will hear that as we prepare for these times that we're living in there is a greater call from the spirit that we all become men of prayer men of the word and men of the secret place this will be my last and final charge we live in a time right now where believers are getting distracted or discouraged my conscience would not leave me in peace if i walk back to my seat without saying this there is a higher call a clarion call for his majesty that people we must return to the place of personal fellowship 
with the Lord. I'm not just talking about give me tea, give me bread. I'm not just talking of five minutes in the morning. Times when you can lock yourself and say, Lord, it is me and you alone. Where you flog it out with destiny in prayer. In the place of study of scripture. Social media is wonderful, but that is, it has become a tool that if not managed will be a demon that bedevils and distracts a generation. We must obtain grace to manage these things and spend time because the strength of the believer is found in the secret place. So my last charge to us courtesy the foundations of Sapphire is that we become people of the secret place. God is not a magician. This is particularly true if there's any man of God here represented or following online. You're not going to cross your hand, leave the issue of God, be careless and access end time power, influence and grace. God is not a magician. Are we together? These things will happen on account of trust. So let me give you a final word for those of us whose prayer lives have gone down so that it will not just be that we came and received miracles and went back. Uh -uh. God is more interested in your spiritual health than your finances. Your spiritual health, thank God you are saved, but to be saved is only one step. That is not all there is. So my final charge and my final call to everyone is that set the ambas the fire of your prayer life let it come afresh again prayer for the purpose of encounter and transformation not just receiving things number two be a student of scripture that is the antidote to error the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons we must obtain grace to be people of scripture to study to show ourselves approved unto god workmen that do not need to be ashamed and then number three your personal place with god every anointing has a consecration that preserves it hallelujah this is my final charge and to the king's court i am truly grateful and thankful to the foundations of sapphire thank you for all that you have done may the lord bless you in jesus mighty name we pray wave your hands to jesus Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.